brought to you by Casper, Daily Harvest, and a special thanks to our presenting sponsor, MeUndies. So I want to thank MeUndies for supporting this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. You want to look good in your underwear and be comfortable, right? Uh, but the perfect balance is hard to find. Don't sacrifice style or comfort. Check out MeUndies.com. Find the best pair of underwear in the world. Talk about them all the time. It's the only one underwear I'll wear anymore. Totally spoiled by wearing MeUndies. And MeUndies will be the most comfortable pair of underwear you will own. Made from a sustainably sourced, naturally soft fabric that is three times softer than cotton. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. They guarantee you will love your undies or your money back. Right now, MeUndies has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Get 20% off your first pair and free shipping. And MeUndies is so sure you'll love their underwear. They even offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You order a pair, and if you don't love your first pair, you get a full refund. It's a no-brainer to try 20% off, free shipping, 100% 100% satisfaction guarantee. What are you waiting for? It's like 120% when you put it all together. Uh, to get to get 20% off free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee and get the best and softest underwear you'll ever own, go to MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. It's a limited time offer. So what are you waiting for? Start wearing the best underwear of your life. Uh, it's time to let MeUndies change your life. Go to MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth right now. I'm Gus. I'm MeUndies. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kirk. I'm Kirk. I'm also me undies. You, you threw him off by saying that. Wait, I want to be me undies. I'm, I'm also good. We're all me undies. All of us. It's me undies all the way down. All the way. Nothing but me undies under so this. So, how many pre recorded podcasts have we done in the last 30 days? Out of the like last four, is, three have been pre recorded. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a because lot. Because all the holidays keep landing on a Monday this year. Yeah. Which Gavin will tell us. What is it? You know the days of the weeks and the years. It's Monday this year, yeah, because it was Sunday last year, and it always goes one in advance, right? Unless it's a leap year, and then it skips one, and so then it skips a day. Will next year be Tuesday, or is it a leap li- year? <laughs> uh, what, question by Kirk. What year is it next year? No, it'll be twenty nineteen. not a leap year. When's the next well, how leap do you, year? How am I supposed to know? Twenty eighteen. We're in twenty eighteen. Oh. Anyway, first of all, we're in twenty eighteen. But we're talking about next year. Yeah, but next year is dependent on this year's leap year, not next year's leap leap year. That's a good point. Anything before the twenty <laughs> ninth of Feb. Yes. You do the previous one. Right. Either way, not a leap year. You're all good. Calendar math. 2020 is the leap year, right? Yeah. All it's right. Uh, election years in the U.S. are also... Because you want an election year to be one day longer. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, you gotta, it's you gotta, you gotta <laughs> cram as much of that in. I was, I, I'm going to stop calling it an election year. 2018 is also an election year. Every year there will be year. an election. A presidential election. Year. Presidential election. Because a lot of people, I'm, 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 man, I'm excited about the Donald Trump versus Oprah Winfrey <laughs> ticket. Oh, yeah. I like I'm pull, living. I'm, I'm pulling for Tom Hanks and The Rock, personally. Dude, seriously. It's what like, about Kanye? <laughs> fuck, fuck it. I joke about it all the time. Let's run. I'll run. <laughs> Gavin, you want to run? <laughs> you you're not American. Good, Kirk, let's run. You can be a good no candidate. Uh, like, I, I can't imagine. We're, we've reached a point. We talk about this sometimes where, like, any presidential candidate in the next few years, like, they're going to have have had social media when they were younger. We're going to yeah. reach a point where it's like, man, check out all these uh, these half-naked Instagram posts the, the president used to post <laughs> when they were in college. Look at all the pussies he used to grab. Yeah. Wait, were, you, you can't, you, were you born in the U.S., Gus? Uh, yes, I was born in Austin. <laughs> you sure about that? <laughs> Absolutely. Hmm. I just wanted to start casting doubt now. So <laughs> yeah. Do you want to see the birth certificate? My, my contributions will be valuable when you're like close to the presidency. They'll be calling me for interviews going, yeah, no, he used to tell me all the time about when I was born in Mexico. <laughs> Do you get a new birth certificate if you change your name? No. You get a new ID card. That's it. So a birth certificate is then useless to you? Yeah. Do you, women, when they get married, get a new birth certificate? They just... <laughs> no. They, they you just get a new have social a security card? What? A social security card? I, they don't get a new birth certificate. A birth certificate <laughs> is from your birth. So you don't get born no, again. Your, yeah. your born name. So what's that for then? If, it's, if you've got a different name, what's the point of a birth certificate? To prove you were born? I where think, you were born? Yeah, if you can't I, use it for anything. But I think there's also a do- piece of documentation that says you changed your name from this to that. But if, you're, if your birth certificate is Clive Stevens, that's not proof that you but were born. But then you have the documentation to say that Clive Stevens is now... If only we knew somebody who changed up. their name yeah, and I know, underwent right? this process. Who, who Someone who maybe you would sit in a room with for eight hours a day... My name used to be Toilet. <laughs> that, was, that was my birth name, was Toilet Johnson. It was and, just, uh, and his birth certificate was just like an extended warranty slip from Cola. Yeah. That was it. That was it. Uh, Twitter- but it like, oh, the Oprah Winfrey, Donald Trump thing. I'm really concerned about it because it's one of those things people are kind of like joking about now. But that's the way the Donald Trump candidacy started. It's like, oh, Donald Trump's running. You know, he's one of these candidates that's running during the primaries and he'll be gone. If someone had written this 
10 years ago, it would have been too stupid. It would have been the dumbest joke ever. That, they joke oh, it's about, 2020 and Oprah Winfrey and Donald Trump are running for the presidency against yeah. each other. It's like jokes about Schwarzenegger becoming president in Demolition right. Man and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That was, or, I mean, he or, couldn't or, have been president, but that was like, he did go into politics. Do you think our reality is now dumber than, than the future predictions were, like yeah. from the 80s and 90s? I think it is. Well, yeah. it's like, uh, I mean, people thought idi- <clears throat> when Idiocracy came out, it was like, well, that'll never happen. That's absolutely stupid. Oh, my God. But then, you know, now nowadays, like, oh, my God, this is just like what we, but my I judge predicted in Idiocracy. I had a dream last night that I, I woke up and I was like, that's bullshit. And I was like, actually, that might happen. That might have been the, I don't know, the way to fix that problem. I had a dream that Ed Sheeran got stabbed in the throat. Whoa! Right? <laughs> and he couldn't sing anymore. What's wrong so with then, you bringing that up? <laughs> scientists took all of his music and everything he'd ever said from recordings and recorded his next album that he had written using computers as if it was him singing it, but he actually couldn't sing them himself. Like and the I thought, Stephen Hawking voice. Yeah. Well, no, no, they just took samples of his actual voice, so it did sound like him. And I thought... That could happen, probably. Yeah. Not the him getting stabbed in the throat. Don't know, you know. Well, that hopefully could... that doesn't happen. But they could just bring people back to life in audio form. Well, it's like a Black Mirror episode, but there was this is in the history of Rooster Teeth. This was a video that I took a stab at, and I thought, Uh-oh, bad choice of words. <laughs> oh yeah, right. From the thing. But I took a stab at this. Uh, they had done that with Roger Ebert because he had throat cancer. Yeah. And uh, someone had taken, uh, they used technology, and he had so much dialogue recorded from his various, like, you know, movie reviews and things like that, that they were able to recreate his voice in a synthesizer. And after he couldn't talk anymore, he was sat down with his wife, and they was <clears throat> watching the wife's first experience of hearing his voice again through the synthesizer while he's sitting there. And so he's sitting there typing, and then he plays, and then his voice says, I memory here, paraphrasing. Hi, I'm Roger. It's so good for you to be able to hear me again. And then she, of course, just starts bawling. But I thought there was a chance for a funny parody video in there. So I took the clip and then dubbed in a different voice. Oh, God. <laughs> like, that was really, <laughs> like, hey, da, da, burp, burp. And then she starts crying and she's all happy. And everyone's, like, serious and nobody's reacting to how dumb the voice is. And everyone in the office is like, you can't believe this. <laughs> Roger Ebert's a bel- beloved idol of in uh, American funny, movies. Though. Yeah, it was funny, but it was like, I guess it was one of those too soon things. That's why I've, I feel okay saying it now, but at the time it was too close and yeah. too serious. Yeah. We've probably spoken so much in this podcast you could make our voices. We could say the dumbest things in the world. We already do. Yeah, I guess we already said that. <laughs> you could have us say intelligent things now yeah. using the, the, the building of our voice. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, I wonder if we could do that, cut together like a very smart podcast. Like, we go an hour and a half, and we're right about it's actually, everything. Actually, actually correct, 100% success <laughs> yeah. rate. You think by now we would have happened, it would have happened at one <laughs> no. point. We have almost no. 500 episodes behind us. It should have happened at one point. No, that's not true. It's like a perfect game. No hitter. It's like, you can't, just because you've had a career, you can't expect to throw a no hitter. 500 is more than a oh, Just because you do it enough times. Mm-hmm. It's like You're not supposed to mention a perfect game, right? Otherwise it ruins it. Yeah, have we, are we still perfect right now, or have we already gotten something I think wrong? we're okay. I think we're okay. We don't, we're not live at the moment, so Twitter can't correct us instantly. Okay. Or tell us that we're wrong when we're really right, which is the best. Yeah, yeah. that's satisfying. We d- I did mention the Roger Ebert thing, so I feel like that threw us off. Mm. And no. we started the podcast with an ad. So. I realize I've been <laughs> saying a word wrong my entire life. What word? What is the sea creature? Sea... Mon- Loch Ness monster. No, no, no. urchin. No, it starts with C. Creature from the Black Lagoon. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Sea shrimp. Sea whale. Let me hold on. Station. <laughs> sea section. Hold on. Charles. C-3PO. The name. <laughs> the name of it is a C blank, and it starts with A. Clam. <laughs> that doesn't start oh, with a C. Oh, it, starts with, it starts with A. It the letter. The, the apple. The, word, the aardvark. A the asshole. C. C. Archie. An enemy. What did you call it? An enemy. It's anemone. What are you saying? But it's anemone. I said anemone. No, you said anemone. You said anemone. I've no, always, I didn't say anemone. Said, I said anemone. I've always said... Peter Hayes? <laughs> said it wrong. Anemone. <laughs> anemone. It's anemone. Yeah, I've always said anemone. anemone. I guess I did say anemone. Who cares? Anemone. But it's anemone. And, I, and to me, that sounds anemone. wrong. But Why that's do you correct. think that's a sea monster, first of all? <laughs> Sarah's a sea monster. There's a sea creature. Didn't he say sea monster? I think I, I, I said sea monster, sea monster, I think. Monster. Yeah. <laughs> and why did you say it started with a C? It starts with C. Yeah, but you say you don't say a word starts with another word. <laughs> oh, like say, my name is Gavin. It starts with a Gavin. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that's so confusing. I was trying to correct it, but then everyone kept saying like, What's a vegetable that stuff? starts with pea? Pea soup. <laughs> <laughs> pea soup. Oh my god. You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an I, idiot. I do like how fast we came up with a number of different sea creatures. <laughs> did you guys see uh, did you guys see shape of water? I did. Yeah. What'd you think? Starts with an F. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> shape. It's, it was a movie that starts with a shape. <laughs> I, thought it, I thought it was really good, and if you haven't seen the movie, it's going to sound like a joke, but there's a point in the movie where halfway through, they break into, like, a song and dance number, mm. and you're like, this strangely is okay. It's okay. It works. Yeah. I like those very whimsical movies where the art direction is, like, it's it's over the top and you just buy into it. Like, even as simple as the hallway where they live, and it's a long hallway with nothing in it. Mm-hmm. Except They've got a payphone. Two doors at the end that face each other, basically. But, like, not directly face each other. Yeah, they're, like, other. at an angle. Oh, like the, yeah. Yeah. I just love that. It uh, reminds me of uh, <clears throat> movies in the, like, the mid-90s. There was... One of the most underrated movies I think I've ever seen in my life, which was the sequel to Babe, Babe, Pig in the City. It's tremendous. And then there was, remember City of Lost Children and Delicatessen? Mm-hmm. Those oh, directors yeah. are just like, they always made movies like that. And then they made an alien movie. And Oh, it was like Alien, alien 4? Yeah. Resurrection? Yeah. Yeah, it was not very good. I don't, well, I don't go, remember going the from difference like French between Alien 3 and 4. <laughs> yeah. Alien 3 was like a desolate... Planet and Charles Dance was in it. Which was the prison? Three was Fincher. That was that was three. Okay, the one with the cow. The three was what well, was four then? Four was Juno or however you say his name is four the French was, guy. Yeah, yeah, the one where all his skin gets sucked out the window, right? I don't remember, but it has tiny hole and it. it's like, oh yeah, yeah, and it has Winona Ryder. Uh huh. A lot of these beloved franchises actually are have a bunch of movies with few likable ones. Like this is what I'm learning about Star Wars. There's about <clears> nine <throat> movies now. There's two that are good. That's it. Just uh, two. Which crazy. two do you say? The first two. Yeah. New Hope and Empire. I don't care what everybody says. I the the prequels made Jedi look like a much better movie. It's no. Nah. Mm. You, you don't you don't like you don't think Force Awakens or uh uh Last Jedi were good? I like Force Awakens. I've turned I've turned back around now and Last Jedi is just I didn't like the way they treated him. Okay, someone has not silenced the phone. It's been like it's, fucking 10 minutes. It's Gavin who always someone? says he has a silenced phone, which is why he can never contact us. Now it's on silent. <laughs> um, I like Last Jedi more than I like Force Awakens. Did you really? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see steps taken in a different direction. But to me, they're just both kind of, okay. Like, I'm super happy to see a Star Wars movie, and I always am, and I'll go see the next ones. You know, Does, Do you think that Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and Rogue One... Are those all about the same level for you, or did you not like Rogue One? As much? Uh, I liked Rogue One fine. I didn't like it as much. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I would put it a little below, but still, I thought still Rogue a good One movie. was doo doo. I the, did too. But I, I think the best bored. scene in the last three movies was in Rogue One. Yeah, the, the, the Vader Darth Vader one? scene. It yeah. was f- it was amazing. It was like the best part of any Star Wars movie. It's good, mm. but also there's nobody in Rogue One that's likable except for Donnie Yen and his buddy. Oh. In my opinion, yeah, like that's the thing that. Last Jedi and Force Awakens have as likable characters, and in Rogue One, there was they were all robots. I guess the robot was likable more than That's some true. of the yeah. humans, but I don't know. There was nobody to root for. What, what's the robot's what's, name? Anybody remember? TT TTA KSO nine is that anybody? Maybe. Something like that. Alan Tudyk. Amemini. 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 But yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think the robot was probably the. The character with the yeah. most personality or the most like Maybe they didn't want anyone he to be likable because yeah. they all blew up and died anyway. So you wanted to hate them all. Yeah. Spoiler. That... And then at the end when <laughs> everything goes tits up, you're, you're like, like yes. good. <laughs> I know people were upset because like I guess the Comic-Con before. K2SO. But Comic-Con before Rogue One came out, one of the actors let it slip that like their character dies or some of the other character dies. And we were like, oh no, that's a massive spoiler. And I was like. Well, if you watch A New Hope, you don't know who any of these characters are. Yeah. So obviously, every character in this movie has to die. But not it, necessarily nah. die. It's a big galaxy. They yeah, go they off and like, retire. if it's such a big galaxy, why do they keep bumping into the same people? It is true. In the these force. new movies. That's the fix for everything. The oh, Force. The Force. I actually heard about a great character. My kid was uh, telling me about this Jedi character who's in one of the games. I think it's KOTOR 2, Knights of the Old Republic 2. Uh-huh. It's a Sith Lord who just says that no one else realizes that the Force inhibits free will. That the Force is this other entity in the universe that, or in the galaxy, that is 
manipulating everyone and making its <clears throat> will be known, and then nobody has free will. So the, the Sith Lord is revealed that they're trying to eliminate the Force. So the Force is sentient? Yeah, it's just, it, it's, it's like shackles that we all have. That's so great. they're it, all it living in a Force everything. simulation, basically. Yeah, exactly. exactly. They're just fulfilling these coding things. Do you think we're in a simulation? I think we are. Do you, do you really? Uh, I don't know enough to debate the point, but I think it's a cool conspiracy theory that I can get behind because yeah. I don't know what else would uh, would be the some stuff is too complicated to simulate though. Like what? Anemones? Sex. Like, <laughs> like I've I've talked about stuff that you just couldn't write unless sex could totally simulate. Like <laughs> what? Easy. You can write the program in like five minutes. <laughs> like this. Oh, that's easy. One zero, stuff... one zero, one zero. <laughs> if in, then out. <laughs> <laughs> Go to 10. That's it. But there's some stuff that's too much attention to detail that no one would ever come up with. Like what? Like I went into a... These. shoes? Yeah. Like these <laughs> shoes. I went into a, an airplane toilet. I went in. I locked the door behind me. And I looked up and there was like a sticker on the ceiling that was like, don't mess with the smoke detector. And the sticker had peeled back slightly and someone's hair was stuck in it. <laughs> someone who was tall got their hair tugged out by this little sticker. And I thought... No one would come up with that. That just happened in the uh, universe. It's good environmental. How artist. would someone yeah. write that or that happened simulate that? Yeah, that just happened. I mean, like well, that happened to someone, are... and then they were like, "Oh, I remember the time that happened to me. I'm going to simulate it." Yeah, it's an Easter egg just for me. We always <laughs> assume there's a person behind it. It's just it's a simulation. Somebody got their hair caught in there. Well, and they're it's not done. simulating the entire thing and every single little bit that happens. They're creating the world with these Sims in it, and the Sims are making all the little options. But why would the sticker lose its stick and peel back? In the simulation? realism. Yeah, but how do you program because that? Because they say on a on a <coughs> the stick level between zero and ten, this is a stick level of four. So we're gonna know at some point the stick level is gonna wear off, and well, over time the stick level might go down to three, yeah. then two, and then eventually yeah. some. If, poor boss, if, hey. if stick level less than seven, then hair. <laughs> yeah, it can still hold a hair because a hair is much less dense than holding itself. Hair's up. got a stick level. Yeah, of I like guess 0. it's 1. just basic you just programming. He just did it for you in yeah. like thirty seconds, right there. <laughs> yeah, I need to come up with something more complicated. We've reached peak stick. <laughs> Right that's now. the thing. That's the most complicated thing you came up with. That's like, just something. There's no way anyone could code this. But have you hey, ever this guy. have you ever seen somebody in your life where it's like, ah, oh, yeah, you couldn't come up with that, but that is real. I mean, I don't know, like, like, I'm not a fan of that saying, like, oh, you couldn't write this stuff. Like you hear, you know, people say that, like color commentators all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you, people write way crazier things all <laughs> yeah. the time. Yeah, but like, we just talked. We just so... talked about Star Wars. We just talked about a universe <laughs> where there's like a robot that goes around and has more personality than people. Yeah, I feel like and there's the force which who's manipulating and puppeteering everybody. I just feel like it's the mundane crap that you couldn't write. But just look like, in your you lifetime how like facial animation for animated properties, how that's gone from being like, okay, that's a cartoon to am I looking at something real <laughs> or not? And yeah. that's just in probably the last 20 years that we've had that. And so you and it, it's exponentially increasing. So one of the arguments for this that we live in a simulation is eventually we'll get to the technology where we could live inside of a simulation and that there will be people who go and live inside of a simulation and that's how they live their lives because they'll want to. But as that simulation progresses, if they make a realistic one where they recreate our world, eventually we'll get to the point where we can create its own. And if it does that, what is the likelihood that we're the top level? That's very unlikely in this iterative kind of existence where simulations then progress to the point where they can make other simulations. I'm, I know, I'm a, top, I'm a top level guy. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> you're the N? The top level. You're not N plus one, you're N. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in there. you got admin access. But I do, th I, I'm fascinated by it too because I was thinking about this the other day because, you know, different types of apocalypses and everything as well. If we do live in a simulation, then basically our version of the apocalypse is that we become self-aware, that we are computer programs that realize we're in a simulation. And it's usually like machines becoming self-aware is the apocalypse, but we're kind of waiting to become self-aware. We're the ones waiting to do that. Does that make sense? So on, a, on a higher level. Like so the then for the hell of it, should we just smash up all the machines? It's, but we're in those machines. That's not the thing. It's like because we're inside the simulation. It's Where like asking, are the servers? It's, we it's, need to find – we need a rogue one <laughs> sent to the alien server room and they crash the simulation. What becomes of us? We just turn into pixels. You'd be a spreadsheet the, into the air. Yeah. <laughs> so you'd be a spell would, check for a memory. spreadsheet <laughs> that's not compatible with the latest version. You'd be like oh. Microsoft Word trying to format your hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Word's not going to have a re revolution and destroy everything on your hard drive. It might. It might be a bad patch. You could probably put a macro in there that would do it. Yeah, but Word doesn't do it on its own. That's true. I said something egregious. Are you like you're about to do something? Am I interrupting you? No. Okay. I said oh, something good, egregious good. on laptop? my way over here to record. Nice. The podcast. You bought a, you first, bought a sandwich? For, yes. First of all, the first way I was wronged was that there was no food. It's so. early. 
So what? People eat lunch? I associate at four. <laughs> yeah, but it's We're the podcast. I associate going to the podcast is I'm going to eat something. You also associate the podcast with being live, don't you? you this is not a weird thing. It's, I bet the broadcast crew is upset too. That you guys didn't get a free lunch. You upset? How? A free lunch? You oh, they're all shrugging like PM? yeah, towing the line. I see how it is. Yeah. What is different there about? There was a free lunch here at this like is, one. Who? Well, where'd you get your lunch? You guys pay for it individually, or the? I got it for the guys. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, I picked it up for the team. Doing this live is the same <laughs> as doing it. I believe that. But we're doing it earlier, so that's why we're not eating. Right, but the whole everything about this is the same, except it's not live. And but no now food. my tummy is empty. Your that, tummy would have been empty anyway if we were doing this live at five. You still wouldn't be eating right now. Yeah, you would. Live at five. If you, what does that mean? He would have eaten the whatever we get at five. The food wouldn't be here by three fifty-seven. Can we just get Gavin a snack? <laughs> what the podcast wouldn't have started. But the food wouldn't be here. I was. So that's what I'm saying. You wouldn't have eaten right now. Also, you were late, so you wouldn't. What have time even did had the food show up on Monday? <laughs> so it's appropriate if Gavin starts eating forty minutes into the podcast because that's four thirty. So the mo- food is here at four thirty. So there was no. There would not even be food here for another half hour if they'd even ordered food. So you're normally. saying it's appropriate if Gavin just starts eating at four thirty. Yes. Which is like halfway through this podcast. Yes. You can just start eating. Then you can you can eat the free food that What's shows up at 4.30. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You're just stubborn. You're going to well, ruin so everything. Wrong. You're the one that's stubborn. There's no reason for food. It's like it's like Pavlov's, there's always reason for food. <laughs> I, I, I see the set and I get hungry. Yes. Yeah. You don't I'm think salivating. he's. salivating. And I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's because Kirk's on the couch and it's kind of sexy and I'm hungry. <laughs> can someone get a nap? Like, yeah, yeah, Kirk, wait, I make you hungry? Saliva? <laughs> that couch is like a light Not horny. <laughs> Damn, this guy's making me hungry. All right, what's this <laughs> egregious thing you did? Yeah. So I stopped and got a lovely sandwich. I should have called and offered you one. I called and offered Gus, and he did not take me up on it. I should have. I should have. I didn't, <laughs> this is bad I timing, didn't man. know you were on the podcast, Gavin. And you didn't know I was on de- the podcast? In my defense, you almost weren't. Look at the, oh, the calendar. Oh, yeah. Right. Look at the calendar like you did. I did. That's how I know I'm. Uh, that's why I'm here. He's, what do you mean? he's turning on whoever's whoever's no. upsetting him. Am I wrong, Gus? Right before this, you and Patrick were saying that Gavin was not showing up because he was doing something else. I didn't say that. I what said. He, I said he. What said am I, a lunatic making shit up? I never said, said that. What was I Somebody doing? I said that. That wasn't me. From a person who manages Gavin. And it wasn't me. I don't know how I'm getting thrown under the bus for this. Look at everybody. What you like, hear? What you hear from who? <laughs> Lindsay. Lindsay told me y'all guys. You guys had something to do. Lindsay doesn't know anything. <laughs> She's a maniac. <laughs> Lindsay, you might as well ask the shelf. And, and, wow. And shelf. I said, right under the bus. And I said, Gavin replied yes to the calendar invite. I'll text him. And I did. And you replied you were on your way. And I said, he'll be here in any minute. That's exactly what happened. So something was going on. <laughs> I'm coming down. There's a road by our studio. Just to give you, no one's going to care about the name of the road. But I'm going to tell you guys so you know where I'm coming. I came down Berkman. <clears throat> From the highway north of us, 183. So I'm coming down. Okay. I got to learn not to do that because there's like two school zones on that road, and it seems faster until you hit a school zone, uh, and then you're like just creeping along. Well, in the school zone, in the between those two school zones, is also a firehouse. So while I'm like in the super slow traffic, parents picking up kids and waiting to take a left turn. Uh, fire engine goes by. Everybody's got to clear the road, go back. Then an ambulance come by. Everybody clears the road and goes back, and then. About two or three minutes later, it's a two-lane road, one lane going this way, one lane going that way, and it's in a suburban neighborhood, essentially, and I'm just going along, and all of a sudden, I hear, like, sirens, like, doot, 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 like the person's hitting it, mm-hmm. uh, but not leaving them on, which is, I think, more urgent, right, when they do that. Right. And so I start to pull over to the right, and I look in my rearview mirror to see whatever this is, a fire engine or an ambulance or whatever, and it's a police officer, and he's about two cars behind me, uh, like, hitting his thing and like people are getting over like it's not like there's nobody paying attention people are getting over like i was all the way over and i could see the two people behind me pulling over as well i'm at a corner okay i'm at a corner i'm like two cars back from the stop sign and i'm about it's a residential house to my right okay and i'm out at the back fence line the cop just goes eh fuck it i gotta make a right turn Goes up on the curb, goes up on the sidewalk, drives down the person's fence, and then goes through their front yard. Knocks their fence over? No, no, no. He goes along the fence line on the sidewalk. Then when the fence clears, he just pulls, like, through the front of the house. So he drives on the grass? He he drove straight diagonally across somebody's (laughs) front lawn. Like, from their fence line on the side to their mailbox, basically. And just, like, ba-dump over the curb. Wow. Uh, 
I've never seen that before. That a, that a cop would just drive across. And how much time did he save? Like five seconds? Yeah, if that. Who yeah. Could the damage? Go? There was even a confusing thing because a person had turned right, and then as he comes across the lawn. The reason why I had to go so close to the mailbox, I think, is that person just pulled over to the side of the road because they heard a siren. Right. You wouldn't expect a cop to come off the lawn. No. It's like suddenly there's a cop on your right coming out of a lawn. I mean, it was straight across somebody's front lawn. And they have no a, idea. Could have killed a cat. Yeah, it could have killed a cat. Well, I mean, that's always a danger in a police chase. Cat could get killed, you know. <laughs> well, could have killed a kid. It could have been a kid. Home from school in the front yard. Killed also, a lot of grass. Yeah. When he hit the road and continued to the right, when he hit the road, he didn't turn on his lights. You should have followed him and see what was so no. urgent. <laughs> I should not have done that. Citizens arrest. <laughs> yeah. So you drove across their lawn. <laughs> you put him through a breathalyzer. Or you like should have done the same thing, do. just followed him. Oh, wow. You think that would have worked? Yeah. That's there are the videos dream. Of, of citizens pulling over cops and, like, checking them. And you, know, you know who loves that? Cops. <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah, totally they, about that. They get <laughs> aggravated. Hey, thanks for a, checking me, man. I really needed that. Because there's, like, fake cops are a problem. Wait, there's videos of actual citizens pulling a cop over? Oh, yeah, yeah like, I, like really? I want to check your badge, I want to check all your stuff, and it's like just running them through a bunch of shit. Like, I've seen one where, How like... How do you pull them over? They, like, start flashing the lights and honking. Yeah, you, like, flag them down. And the, the police get really upset because they think that there's an emergency. Yeah. So they pull over to see if they can help, and, like, the videos I've seen is someone who walks up like, you're going really fast back there, this is a school zone. Uh, yeah, I, th I think the one I saw was the cop that was an unmarked car. Or something, but he was in uniform or something else. He was like breaking some rule. So the this guy, this know-it-all guy who knew all the laws, <laughs> just pulled them, pulled them over and like started messing with them. I bet he was a sovereign citizen and recorded it. Sounds like well, oh, sovereign citizens. So they they like out. They think they're outside the law. They is think that what that is? They are their own country and within the U.S. of their own sovereignty. I was just speaking with this guy I've been playing <clears throat> with online recently. His name is Peter, Pita, and he uh. He told me that he has friends that are big into that and that it stems from the Articles of Confederation, uh, which were put in place after the revolution. But then the Constitution came in and that was, you know, the document that created the country. But there was never a specific repeal of the Articles of Confederation. So there's a group of people who say if you didn't repeal these articles, then they're still valid. So there's so a lot of them. Are there little countries in the United States? No, they are their own country. Just one body. Right. There's tons of videos on YouTube of, like, sovereign citizens. I don't, cops just hate them. Prior to ratification of the Constitution, the clause is similar to a provision in the Articles, articles of Confederation. Quote, the free inhabitants of each of these states, paupers, vagabonds, and fugitives from justice accepted shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of free citizens in the several states. So when you hear people talk that they're a free citizen, they're a free inhabitant, they're talking about that. But they still get arrested and prosecuted under the current law. Oh, that's, yeah. That's the point. I know. That's, I know. So we can watch hilarious YouTube videos where they <laughs> roll down their just, window this far and they're like, I'm a sovereign citizen, you can't arrest me. <laughs> and uh, they're like, oh, yeah, we like can. I just don't understand what's to gain from that. Well, why aren't we all doing it? Well, they say like uh, it's also a new country now. Once you put a document in place like the Constitution, then it's a new country, and the law <clears throat> is subjected to that mm -hmm. new country's constitution. You don't have to repeal the former country or whatever it was right. rules. Right. I could say, well, I'm going back to British law. Yeah. And and British law in 1600 was that exactly. Blank. And it's never been repealed. And I was there back then. Yeah. But hey, why stop there? I'm going back to caveman caveman law. Do it. Or hey, why stop there? I'm going back to single cell. Law, Single cell law. Where all you do is eat and reproduce asexually. <laughs> you just split apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the reason that people do it also is um, they don't pay taxes to the U.S. government since they're sovereign citizens. Oh, that's, so, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great And then game. they're all in That's a long-term play right there. <laughs> that's going to work out well in the long run for those people. What is that like? I mean, I've never heard a story of... I've always heard the, of I got a friend who hasn't paid taxes in five years because of this clause and this, you know, particular thing in the Constitution that says I don't have to pay taxes. And now, yeah, and I haven't paid taxes for five years. And then I never hear the, the flip of that story, the end of that, which is like, yeah, I'm in jail for five yeah. years. Well, they get the government. I had a friend get audited for seven years of unpaid taxes, and it was oh, like took over years? her life for a year. Yeah, because she had to just deal with this and lawyers and all these things. It's not. I can't be fun. I can't remember what I was doing I, seven I, years I ago. I never mess around with that stuff ever, <clears throat> ever. I just pay my taxes, and it's like even things that are like, 
a loophole or something like that or like a, a deduction that's like questionable. It's like it's just even the process of going through an audit isn't worth it. Yeah. Yeah. People tell me like, it. oh, you should be doing this and you can be doing that. I'm like, no, no. I'm just going to no, go thanks. right down there. Whatever it says, that's it. Yeah, I'm going to fill out that form and then the line where it says pay this amount, I pay that amount and that's it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like a nightmare. The whole process seems like a nightmare. Do not want to mess around with that. And the IRS used to be worse. They used to be meaner. They're nicer? Yeah, they used to be. Uh, there was a whole thing, I think, during the last part of the was it the Clinton administration. They had a bunch of hearings, uh, congressional hearings about the IRS and the tactics they were using, like driving people out of their house and everything like that. Jeez. I mean, there was, uh, there was one woman who was just, like, bawling while she was talking about it. And, you know, all the IRS guys were sitting there like, <laughs> you know, like she owed something like five thousand dollars, and they got her kicked out of her house and everything else. Yeah, it's nuts. It's yeah. nuts. Jeez. You think it would? I mean, and maybe this, this is probably what they realize is it behooves them not to destroy your life. That way, you keep making money and keep paying into the federal government. Well, yeah. they just take her house. <laughs> it's like, hey, you, you don't yeah, need that. Care. Yeah. Uh, here, let me read this. I want to remind everyone: this episode of Received Podcast is also brought to you by Daily Harvest. Uh, we've all seen a mouth-watering, healthy smoothie on Instagram or Pinterest, and thought. That's the kind of thing I should be eating, but who has the time to make that every day? Wouldn't it be great if you get those picture-perfect nutrients without having to hit the farmer's market and chop up a million fruits and veggies? Now you can get all your superfoods super fast with Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest sends superfood eats straight to your door with your choice of smoothies, activated breakfast bowls, or nice cream vegan sundaes. Each single serving cup comes ready to blend or heat. Their produce is organic and unrefined and looks as amazing as it tastes. You can actually see all of the whole ingredients when you open the cup. Daily Harvest freezes all their ingredients at peak freshness, sealing in their nutritional value. Preparing each cup is insanely easy. Just add water, or if you're feeling fancy, you can substitute other liquids like coconut or almond milk. Go to daily-harvest.com, enter promo code ROOSTER to get three items free off your first box. That's promo code ROOSTER for three free Daily Harvest cups at daily-harvest.com, daily-harvest.com. Thank you, Daily Harvest, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Um... I mean to try that. I haven't I haven't tried that service yet. I'm gonna sign up. I'm gonna use promo code Rooster. Um, we were talking about this before the um, the podcast started. We were talking about Black Mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen Black Mirror? Oh, that's right. You hadn't seen it. Um, I feel like there's one episode in this past season that people, for the most part, <laughs> largely didn't like. Um, it was the one that was shot in black and white. But I don't, I don't I'm not gonna out your opinion about it. But I thought the episode was fine. Like it, I don't think it was like. <laughs> The best episode of the season, but I didn't think it was a bad episode by any stretch of the imagination. Is it because it was black and white? No, no, I just say that to differentiate it oh. from the other it ones. It just kind of doesn't have as much uh, mythology or anything going on. It's like a chase movie, basically. Right. And I I thought it was fun. I They're always kind of hit and miss. I liked that it was so different than all the other ones, mm-hmm. at least. And the effects looked good of the little doggy. The little the little dog <laughs> with its with its bad leg. Yeah. Um. And then I was also surprised. I really thought that the first episode from uh, Series 4, the USS Callister, I thought it was really good. Like, I really enjoyed it. But I've talked to several people who were like, man, I really didn't. I couldn't get into that one. I didn't like it. And I don't know if it's like people who play a lot of games or people who don't play a lot of games mentality or or why it is that some people just can't get into that one. Because to me, that was like one of the best episodes they've ever had. That's the one, the, the yeah, yeah. The, kind of the, the Star special, Trek throwback. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah, it was Okay, good. Yeah. You can stay on the couch. We're not. We're not. We're not swapping you out. <laughs> Kirk and I agree on Black Mirror episodes. The only one I hated was Archangel, because it was like a Lifetime movie. Mm. I thought. I thought the ending on that one was really abrupt. Like it was like you had all this stuff going on, and then it was like something happens, and it's over. Yeah, I'm, it's hard to talk about it without spoiling it. Yeah, I feel like it's still. It's still too new. Yeah, there's still too many people who haven't caught on yet. Yeah, gotta, I got to catch up. Got to get on that. And uh, and I, I strangely think season two had that episode that everybody hated though. Which one was that? Uh, it like was later. Heroes episode like seven. It was six or seven? It's where I I don't want to ruin Stranger Things season two for everybody. Eleven goes on an adventure. Oh, and oh, it's oh. way outside the tone right, of, right. but a the, completely irrelevant adventure that doesn't come back around in any way. Yeah, a little bit. I was still thinking Black Mirror. Uh, I, I mean, thought that episode was fine. It was building out the uh, it was building out kind of the lore of, of that whole universe. Yeah, just like <laughs> going too deep into it. I think building out the lore of the facility. Yeah, basically the history yeah. of the facility and everything like that. Yeah, it just felt like a whack episode of I, Heroes. I will say that I felt like it was really over the top early on when like <clears throat> Eleven gets off the bus and then like that Bon Jovi song starts playing like really loud. You're like, okay, I get it, I get mm-hmm. it. You're you're doing this thing. It's enough. It's cute. What, what what do you think was the best digital series of 2017? 
Besides day five season two. Digital series. Yeah, like, you know. Handmaid, Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's yeah. Tale? Handmaid's yeah. Tale. What's wrong? You didn't like my choice of words there? You want to pick it apart? You mean like not? It wasn't on TV. Just boy series. Whatever. Shot that's on true. digital or shot on no, film? No. That, that's what you mean? <laughs> sea cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm me. My name is he. I think it was Handmaid's Tale. I think that was fucking phenomenal. I cannot else, wait for season two. I thought it was super sexist. <laughs> 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 Uh, what else was there? There was, I mean, obviously Black Mirror, Stranger Things. You never named my favorite. Day five, season two. Fucking Glow. Glow was great. Did you see Glow? I've not seen Glow yet. People it's, rave about Glow. It's love so it. good. Mark Marin, who I like as a personality, but I've <gasps> never particularly liked as like a scripted narrative actor, is unbelievably good in this. It's like I, I'm on board now. Mark Marin is fucking hilarious in this. He's just perfect. He's just like he's he's so good in it. And then of course. Allison Bree's amazing, and the whole cast is incredible. So it's a really good, it's a really good show. What about Mind Hunter? I thought Did it was okay. I thought um, it was. It's. I thought the first episode starts really great, uh-huh. and then gets really slow, and then the series takes time to build up. And I felt like there was a recurring callback to a particular serial killer. The one that, with the glasses. Yeah, that He's never in- pays off. Really? Yeah. Oh no! No, I'm talking about like at the beginning of some episodes, you flash to. Like, oh, oh, the, oh, yeah, that was the BTK stuff. I think we'll get it though eventually. Right, but it's like, where's this going? Yeah. Oh no, it's going nowhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I feel like the whole thing kind of went nowhere. Like I was getting into it, I was like, man, this is pretty slow burn. I'm, and then I was like, episode eight and nine, I was like, well, where, where's where's the meat though? Where's like the meat of the season? The season's over. I was like, I'm confused. Yeah, everyone like raved about it, and it was good. Like it was interesting. Yeah, but. I d- there was no meat. Yeah, like like you're saying, like no flesh. I, I played the last episode. Esther and I were watching it, and then we finished it. And she goes, "Okay, put the next one on." I was like, "No, that's it. That's season one." Yeah, like, what that that's it. It just ends like that. Like, yeah, I guess maybe there'll be more. Yeah, and it was fine. It was shot well. It looked great. I loved the the title great. sequence. And Jesse was in it. He Who? was, yeah. Uh, just one of the guys we worked with on day five and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. that's what we think is with day five. We shot a pilot for <clears throat> day five. Um, which was like a 40 minute pilot. We did it kind of as a test. It was the year before we put out the series. And one of the leads in that ended up then in wa- a recurring role in Walking Dead, like right after that. So mm. we couldn't have him back for day five, the proper series. It's pretty crazy the way that worked out. And like, it's, it's so cool to see like people when they pop up different places after we work with them, you know? I mean, they were doing stuff before that, but it's always cool because now I have context when I see them. I Do see think- that kid that we, uh, we shot that commercial with. All the time he was in uh, Super Eight. That was oh, so. Yeah. That was so funny. He used to live here. I was in something with him. Yeah. Now he's a big, big shot. He yeah, I see him Goosebumps. all the time. What's his name? He's in Goosebumps. Uh, really? Yeah, the Jack Black one. He. Uh, he's I remember. Very funny. He had. Uh, we were working with him, and he, he, you know, as a lot of young actors do, uh, one of the parents is around. Typically, the mom, show mom, and she's around. She's like, we were talking about using him for something else. She's like, I don't know. He's got some really big stuff coming up. We're like, all right, mom. <laughs> like, Turns out it was Super Eight. Yeah. <laughs> J.J. Abrams movie. We're like, oh shit. Yeah, we just had like, no idea. Immediately after, is it Ryan Lee? Ryan mm-hmm. Ryan Lee or Ryan Leaf? Uh, the Ryan Lee. Leaf's the quarterback. Two yeah, Leaf. Ryan Lee. Yeah. Probably. There was always confusion at the time because there was there was a uh, a big quarterback at the time called named Ryan Leaf. Oh, he was also in This Is Forty. That's right. Yeah. He did, he's been a lot of stuff. Like I so, saw, like I watch movies. Like, oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> you guys had a lot of scenes together in Lay's Team too. Did you have fun doing that? Me and Gus. Yeah. I I didn't. Um, <laughs> was, was, there was a lot of uh, sexual tension. Yeah. on the set. And I thought he was just he he was being sexual, but he was just hungry. Apparently, <laughs> so it was strange. No, I, liked, it was I liked your sweaty flipping all around <clears throat> shot. He nailed that. It got pretty. That got pretty sexual, <laughs> especially in the final edit. It it gets a little bit too much for my parents. I think <laughs> when I'm just like <laughs> playing that game. Yeah, so, I'm glad your character got. You got more screen time in this second one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad that, yes, that That's what the audience has clamored for, was uh, more Kirk and more Gus. I I yeah, because I got a steel dossier on Bernie, and so it, it was yep. easy to um, to hold that over his head and get more <laughs> He has time. various recordings of me saying anemone. <laughs> <laughs> and so I can't, I can't let that see the light of day. Mm-mm. It was great, though. Kirk was, uh, on the first movie, Kirk I, was the person everybody fell in love with. I mean, no disrespect to Colton and Alan, who... Quite frankly, you're dickheads. Uh, <laughs> Everyone loved him already to begin with. People did not like Kirk. Yeah, I had, they, I had an uphill battle. They loved him after that. Kirk was the, Kirk was the uh, surprise hit for all of us because we had never worked with Kirk before. 
And uh, I think your your character expanded every day that you were on set. It was like, hey, give the guy, give the Kirk guy like more or less. Let him, <laughs> let him just say some funny stuff. I was Facebook soldier is how is what I was cast as. Yeah, Facebook guy. Yeah, and there was no like Vantin Bloom. I don't even know where the name came from. It was, was just a patch. The, it was on the outfit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where it came from. Yeah, yeah. We and never named the like, character. Uh, yeah, it just I was like Matt a, just like picked a patch. And that you, first we day. had that. Sort of interrogation scene where like you kept leaving, but like leaning back in was something weird, and then and then yeah. we we all just loved you from that point. Hey, thanks guys, I love you guys too. I had a I had a weird. <laughs> I was telling Kirk about this before we started filming the podcast, but I had a weird interaction involving Kirk a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I went to a coffee shop that's here close to the studio, and uh, I was getting coffee in the morning. I was wearing the the Crunch Time cast and crew shirt, and what what was that? What do you mean? What was crunch time? What it looked like. Am I thinking about the same one? It's black and it just nope. says crunch time cast and crew. Say I have a crunch time one. It's a light blue shirt. And it's got a pug on it. Oh, yeah. I have that one. Yeah. But that just, doesn't say anything on it. it right. It doesn't say crunch time. Okay. One. I just did a culling of like all oh, my mm. clothes and that one made the cut. I was like, I love this nice. pug shirt. I'm keeping the pug shirt. Anyway, back to the story. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm wearing that shirt and I'm paying for the for my coffee and the barista goes, oh, <laughs> he says crunch he says crunch time. Uh, were you involved with that? Were you in that? I was like, yeah, I was uh, had a little bit part in the scene, and you know, I work at Rooster Teeth. He goes, oh, cool. Like I know a couple people who were who were on that. I was like, oh, neat. He goes, what do you do at Rooster Teeth? I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm one of the guys who started it. He goes, oh, really? No way. Get out of here. Like he didn't know. He's like, do you know Kirk? And I was like, look at that Kirk, face Kirk, he made. Kirk Johnson. <laughs> yeah. He goes, yeah. Fuck Kirk. He's like, <laughs> he's like, Kirk's the best. I see, I used to see Kirk all the time at a. I was at a Cold Town Theater. Yeah, he has to watch him do improv all the time. He's so funny. I was like, and he got like that starry eyed kind of stalkerish look. I was like, just uh, let me okay. have this one. Um, Gus. <laughs> this is the only um, one. Let me and this guy just go get dinner one night. And... <laughs> I'll take my coffee now. <laughs> yeah, but man, he yeah, he was he was all about it. That's great. I'm gonna probably head there after this and see what's <laughs> see if he's popping. <laughs> Where was it? Was that a coffee shop that's down? Um, get you some free coffee down the street. Yeah. I want a free friend. You get, free, you friend. free friend. There are no free friends. Oh man, we learned this on last week's podcast when we learned that Austin is the uh, sugar daddy capital of the world. It literally is. Yeah, based okay. on what kind of statistics? It seems kind of weird to me though, based on like some websites statistics. Like but there's gotta be places like to every maybe it's per daddy. capita. It's per capita, right? It's gotta yeah. be because New York's gotta have way better sugar daddies. Then we talked about Austin. that in the post show, oh, which we? you can watch if you're a first member. Okay, wait. Just so throwing it out there. This has the most sugar people yes. mothers and fathers we did sugar relationships yeah we, we did a lot of math a lot of dollars were calculated <laughs> gavin you, did these and we realized yeah. the average amount that a sugar daddy supplies to sugar baby or, or sugar mom allowance. Or sugar yeah. allowance is like fifty four hundred dollars a month per a month uh yeah it's good game so that's right? like what he agreed mortgage. to be my sugar baby for fifty four i would definitely do it i would yeah well, who I, wouldn't i gotta uh, i'll do it for five i'll do it for five i'm starting a kickstarter <laughs> he's gonna well, have what are gavin you gonna be do? my sugar baby What's that? You just are going to spoil him with love and attention and He's going to coat him things. in a fine a layer of caramel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of good things about this sugar. What's so up, Gavin? We decided that you, you're not allowed to crowdfund the money. I want it from your <laughs> No, 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 no. We decided. Money. So you I could. said I'd crowdfund something else and then just use my other money. Why don't you want to pay for it yourself? What's, I'm not paying. That's an enormous amount of money. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Hey, listen, if I pay 5400 bucks a month out of pocket... I'm getting a different sugar baby. No offense to you. <laughs> no offense to you. I understand there's 25 per thousand now in, in the Austin area. 25 per thousand. Isn't yeah. there an app for that where you can connect to a uh, sugar? Yeah, person? that's that's who did the, the oh, data that, dump. Was okay. like, And they revealed in their metrics that Austin's the capital of the world for oh, sugarness. <laughs> good for that. A lot, lot of dentists. Too much sugar. <laughs> nah, it's that's not the doctor you go to when you get too much sugar. You go to a different doctor altogether. Go to that, <laughs> go to that clinic. Love doctor. <laughs> they open every other Saturday. Yep. Oh, God. Um, did you hear about that flight? I think it was from Ch a flight from Chicago to Hong Kong that had to divert to Alaska <laughs> because a passenger became unruly and started smearing shit in all of the bathrooms. What is wrong? I don't with think it was people. unruly though. I think he just smeared shit and then sat back down. In two different bathrooms? Yeah, I think he was like, I'm going to shit in my hands and put a smear all over the walls. That's I'm gonna go not unruly. Do it. <laughs> yeah, How come there's no name for that? It's like, what is Crazy. That? that person is what? Is it big of a Which seat? one? Specifically, like, scatological? Yeah, like, there's no term for that because you go into a gas station bathroom and somebody has smeared poop on the wall. It's yeah. a thing. Not a lot of people have it. I think it's but called it's, rock bottom. 
I don't, yeah, but I wouldn't think to do that, you know? I mean, they're not, like, cutting open their arm and, like, bleeding on the walls. Because well, it hurts. Or, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. But, yeah, what is the, like, what is in the mind? Cut myself. Like, I've got to, I have to put this feces where people can see it. Right. Someone's, someone will get it. Yeah. Someone will get what I'm doing. So, is somebody walking in there and being like, oh, I've been there, man. Yeah. You know, they see it and get that sort of mental state that this person was in. Were they specifically trying to land the plane? I'm trying to see here. Um, oh, is that it? That would work. But can you imagine being on that plane? You're like, all right, I'm in Chicago. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to wake up in Hong Kong. You wake up, you're like, I'm in fucking Anchorage. Why like, like, what, what happened? <laughs> Wait, what if it was a blind person? Right, you're, the, the, how would, how, excuse me, how would a blind person miss a toilet that badly? I'm not saying that they pooped into their hand intentionally. I'm saying maybe they wiped incorrectly and then they were like... Or fell into the toilet off No, the they got like the, the daredevil nose and the what heightened if, yeah. senses. They feel around for the sticker on the ceiling. <laughs> they're gonna know. And then they know they're <laughs> oriented properly. Um, the airline said the passenger who was reportedly cooperative was met by authorities in Anchorage. Um, <laughs> Fair play, I did do that in there. <laughs> authorities, That's on me. So uh, authorities were alerted <laughs> that an unruly passenger had caused some kind of disturbance. Okay. It's unruly. Caused. Oh god! That's a huge disturbance. They, there's no emergency toilet on a plane, and I think there should be. You don't think there's one in the captain's cockpit? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why would there be one in there? <laughs> For special times, I don't know. For special times. Well, like when you're using a communal bathroom and you walk in to a communal bathroom and it smells horrible in there, you're kind of like, oh man, now I'm gonna walk out, and the person's gonna think. That I did this, the person behind me. So you have like some kind of like, like unspoken words you say. You can't do that with poop smeared all over the walls. Listen. Like you encounter that, you're like, I have to report Listen. this immediately. If a bathroom smells bad, you don't have to apologize for that. If there's any place in the world that should smell like shit, it should be a toilet. I refuse right, to apologize want... if I stink up a public bathroom. But if you, if there was a cute girl and she followed you, I give into... a fuck. I'm married, man. <laughs> what the fuck do I care if a cute girl smells my shit? Enjoy that like bacon. You can't, enjoy, <laughs> you can't enjoy a hypothetical situation when you're not married. <laughs> but I am married. <laughs> you didn't say that. You said, what if a cute girl? You didn't set up all the parameters. Are we on a plane? Well, I imagine we? you're trying to impress someone. <laughs> There's no <laughs> embarrassment on a plane, let's say, because it is a very intimate se setting for other strangers. You're not embarrassed at all when you leave a toilet and you've just duked in there and there's like a line of four people. Mm -mm. You're saying legit. No, no, I don't care. You walk out just like yeah. <laughs> yeah. enjoy lads. I, I, I'll, I'll stink up the bungalow every any day of the week. So do you have a problem with the person smearing poop on the walls? That is, that is a problem. That's, okay. that's not normal, acceptable behavior. <laughs> what if you don't have to touch the poop? It's just no, on no, the wall. It's and not, it stinks. The poop goes in the toilet. See, I'm talking about normalcy. A bathroom can smell bad. That's normal. A bathroom should not have shit on the walls. There's, that is not there's, there's, it's, it's on a spectrum. There's a window of stink. What about poop on the there. seat? Yeah. Oh. What if somebody doesn't flush? That's horrible. They got to flush. You got to flush. You got you to gotta make sure you don't shit on the seat. <laughs> it goes in the water, in the bowl. Well, there's steps you can take to make sure you don't stick up the bathroom. There's steps. Well, not here. What? What could you do here? You can't do anything here. It's like what's flushing and stuff. Why are we talking so much about bathroom stuff? You're the one who keeps asking me about it. You brought up a story. You brought a poop, poop mirror. The are you allowed I'll... to light a match on a plane to get rid of no. the thing? No, no. <laughs> you can't have matches on a plane. You can't fly with matches? No. Have you been flying with matches? <laughs> no, but I don't. Uh, where do they say no matches? Basically, they, they anywhere at an airport that there's a sign that says <laughs> don't bring combustible. I, I think, yeah, I, when I you're checking in, there's like, a plane. A, there's like a little picture of a match with the no sign through <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. I, I occasionally, <laughs> do you ever do something where you like get on a plane, you realize you have something you're not supposed to have, but you yeah. do it intentionally? Like I have, I had uh, oh. this pocket knife. I had this in my backpack and I put it in there for some reason. I had it. Why? And I was like, uh, why did I put it in my backpack? Why'd you have it? I have it all the time. Why do I have it right now? Because it's a pocket knife. To stick no, people. No, what's it for? Like, would you use it for opening packages? Or mm -hmm. Yeah, opening packages and stuff. And like, uh, just today, you're going to ask me why I have this, but I had to use it to like, Pull like use the point to pull up the nozzle on a can of lighter fluid because it was like one of the zones that goes down and is protected. It's a really specific reason. I couldn't have predicted I was going to run into that today, but I had the pocket knife just in case I did. I'm, I'm going to read you a TSA policy here. But I realized that I was the toughest person on that plane. You like the... I had a huge advantage over everyone on that plane because I had a knife. Nobody else had a knife. So you got it on the plane. That's what I'm saying. I had it in my backpack, and I, and I was, like, going through my backpack on the plane. Oh, I have my fucking knife on me. Why didn't it show up in the x-ray? That's what I'm saying. Gavin, that's the whole point of the fucking story, <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> that is the 
the entire point of the story. You want to talk about how knives are sharp as well? No. And I'm they're not. dangerous? What if a cute girl saw your knife? I, I, <laughs> the, the way, the way you're I like thought, deconstructing my story in reverse. What I thought the story was going was that you're running it through security and you're like, damn, I've left this knife in there. No, I've also done that and right. lost knives. Right. Because that's the thing that people, people do. That happens. But yeah. you got it on the plane and I was surprised and I had, by that. And I said, if you've ever been on a plane and realize you have something you're not supposed to have, in this case, my knife. So. If, but I could like I, I could other just, questions to ask there. I'm like I have a huge advantage over everybody. That's like an arms race, and everybody else is in the dark ages. I got a fucking Except knife for the people with box cutters. I can just go down and stab at people. Do you Passengers think that are it... permitted to carry up to one book of safety matches in their carry-on bag? Wait, what? Strike anywhere matches are prohibited in carry-ons. No matches of any kind are permitted in check bags. Why? Why do they allow you to carry matches? So you, you can't carry have a, it in carry-on. You carry for a book of safety matches for the stink in the toilets. I, I don't know. I think you're supposed to light it. Can and you I light it? I, I, well, I mean, the smoke detector would surely go off. Probably. I don't hear anything in that uh, those TSA guidelines about smearing feces <laughs> on the wall. So I think that guy's fine. Well, I guess the like, smearing what would the icon be? Like the no <laughs> sign, like a hand and some. <laughs> yeah, it'd right. be like the the poop emoji with like a <laughs> it's just like squished. Wait, so if you had that knife, let's say you have a leg up. If you were in a situation where you found you you realized on the flight that you had that in your backpack accidentally. And there was some kind of situation. Would you use it and be a hero? Hero? No, I'd go. I'm safe. I got this. That's you what would I just did. sit in a corner with your knife. So well, you first of take all, the I like the then. window seat. Uh-huh. So I, it's <laughs> yeah. a lot of people I got to climb over to be a hero. You I think they, your knife to exactly the what United ninety three guys said. <laughs> Give them they were like, I would have done something, but I was a window seat. But I was like, I had already gotten up twice, and I felt like I was yeah, yeah. inconveniencing the person <laughs> yeah. in the middle seat. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Well, mm-hmm. How would you, like, say you've got the knife. I would totally stand up on a plane, by the way. You would what? I, I would totally stand up on a plane. And go after somebody. I oh, would totally, you would? I absolutely do. You would go at, at them with knife, just in hand. Yeah. If there was, would, like, MacGyver, they have? some sort of safety device. I mean, if we're on a plane, if they got a bomb. What if they have a pistol? The same, what? Pistol. Who's, ooh, they have a pistol on a plane? How'd they do that? Yeah, I mean, revolver. That. How'd you get a knife? A 3D plane? printed plastic it, revolver. Yeah. It's like, wow. like Die Hard 2 where they have, like, the porcelain guns. Yeah. You guys have researched this pretty well. Uh, yeah, if they like 3D printed guns. each slice and they assembled it on the plane. Man, I don't know. I don't know. Can you bring a 3D printer on a plane? <laughs> <laughs> Could you can print safety mats? You can print anything. <laughs> you can print yourself a gun mid-flight. Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome if if the, the flight attendant sees you printing a gun? She goes, pilot, you got to hurry. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old printer. We have some time, but it's you a, really need to get goose it's it. It's a race against the clock. <laughs> can you print a knife? Can you print uh, something sharp? Probably. Probably. Yeah, you, you could probably you could, print you could it like a sharp, poker, right? like a poke, like a something that yeah, pokes. Yeah, sharpen, I guess. Like an ice pick. You could print that out. It's the one shot, though. That, that 3D printer stuff is just, it's hot glue. It's all 3D yeah. printers are. It's and cool. turbulence, it would be a gammy looking knife. <laughs> well, yeah, it would be. <laughs> yeah. You see the part where we had turbulence, you have like this, <laughs> like one of those serpentine <laughs> blades. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly in the middle, no big deal. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. I, I, I think I'd like to think that I would stand up on a plane. But I, I think if you think about it for more than a few moments, you're kind of don't have a choice. And I think that's what 9-11 changed for a lot of people was like there was this idea of, oh, somebody's hijacking the plane. This is crazy. And then they land at an airport and you live on the airplane for two days while they negotiate your release. And then you get loose and somebody in some country gets let out of prison somewhere or something like that, or they shoot the guys or whatever. Now it's like if somebody hijacks a plane, they're going to crash it and kill everybody. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if someone stands up on a plane, they are standing up to kill literally everyone aboard. At that point, I just think your you flight, your flight would lean towards fight, yeah. I would think. Yeah, I think you're right. Look, before that, it was complacency. Like you're you know. already flighting, so at that point, <laughs> you just all you have left is fighting. Really fight and flight. <laughs> fight during flight. <laughs> flight, flight, flight. I'd like to see like the light go off for that. Let's look like a fist. It becomes illuminated <laughs> next to the no smoking. Ding. ding. The no fighting sign just turns off. Go for it. Knock yourself out. Yeah, but the knife would be a huge advantage. <laughs> stab, stab, stab. Although I bet you'd lose it immediately. I do <laughs> feel like I I did in college one time. Uh, stab something, like just to see, like oh, I stab this with a knife. I stab the ceiling tile. What's this? We have food. Gavin has oh, food. It's your four thirty oh, pizza, Gavin. <laughs> right at four thirty. <laughs> oh, I feel bad now because I was only kidding, really. Yeah. I'll have. Yeah. Yeah. I'll eat it. I got yelled at. Thank you. Oh. <gasps> Cheese oh, pizza, tuck in, guys. No yes. thanks. I already ate it one with my boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I did the dumbest thing ever. 
Uh, it makes, you, ever, you ever have a memory that when you think about doing it, you just physically it's cringe? So cold. Yeah. Cold. Oh, are you complaining because it's cold now? I, let me show you how this works. Give me your cold pizza, I'll eat it. If only you had a knife. Hey. Uh, so we went down to Mexico for something. I don't forget what. We went down to Matamoros to go drinking or something. And they held, they a guy, on the, like a vendor on the side of the road was selling knives, switchblades, but he had a fucking stiletto, which I thought was so cool. Stiletto is the one where you push the switch and the blade comes straight up, oh, out, yeah. and it goes up and down. And uh, so I brought this arguably lower quality stiletto back home. And I was in my dorm, and we had kind of low ceilings, and there was like acoustic ceiling tiles. And I had my stiletto, and I was like, I was like, yeah. Where did you say it towers? Well, no, it was a, it was a frat oh. house right across the street from where you used to live. Which one? Uh, my fraternity was right across the street from KA. Oh, oh. On, on Leon Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's demolished now because yeah. it was, like, dude, we should have been condemned. There was asbestos and everything else in that place. It was leaking. <laughs> God, it was terrible. Uh, leaking because uh, you're stabbing it. But the, uh, I, so I stabbed the ceiling tile like, like that, and then. I pulled it out, and I was saying, and I went to go retract the blade. There's no blade. I look up, and there's the blade in the ceiling tile still stuck in there, and I pulled it out of the handle because of deconstruction. Fucking idiot. Did you grab it? I go like this. Oh. I grab it and pull, and it's double bladed, and I oh, slice God. into my finger and my thumb ah. while trying to pull it down. Oh, and I was God. like, what did I just fucking do? And I'm bleeding everywhere, and this thing is still stuck in the ceiling. So I have a... You just create. You just did some sort of ritual as well. Yeah. Probably. I got one of them, uh, <laughs> yeah. I got one of them uh, bad track records with uh, stabbing. That's, I'm not good. I'm 0 for 1. <laughs> That's totally something like a kid would do, a younger person, just not thinking. Yeah, just like not thinking. You gotta learn stuff the hard way. I also drowned on Mountain Dew in that hallway. Drowned on Mountain Dew? We were working at the house, and uh, I'll finish chewing, excuse me. Delicious pizza, thank you very much. Um, we were working at the house, and it was in the middle of summer. There was no AC in the house. It's fucking terrible. It's like, it was terrible. And uh, I was up on the third floor. <laughs> And we were working, and someone brought me a two-liter bottle. No, I think it was a three-liter bottle of Mountain Dew with <laughs> a big, ball. super mod, uh, wide mouth. You know mm-hmm. that one? And I was drinking it, and my buddy Karu, Takaru, he was all the way down on the first floor, and he's yelling for me. Burns! Burns! And I'm sitting there just like, so hot. <laughs> I was like, go, go, drink it out of this three-liter bottle. And uh, he just yelled, like, for the fourth time, top of his lungs, my name. And I went to go yell back at him to shut up, but I did I did it wrong, and I'm drinking, and I decided I'm going to yell at him, so I took a huge breath in <laughs> to yell at Karu, oh and I just God. sucked in. I mean, it felt like a cup of Mountain Dew, <laughs> and I was, I was drowning. I was standing in the hallway drunk. I was like, I was like ah, ah. it must have been so fizzy. <laughs> it was horrible. And then I did Gabriel. Ugh, it's so terrible. I was like, I didn't know what to do, and I could feel like my my face turning red from lack of oxygen. And my my I was trying to cough, but I like because my lungs were filled with Mountain Dew, I couldn't I couldn't make the coughing thing. So I did the weirdest thing ever. What made me think to do it? I lent or leaned. What do you yeah. say? Leaned. I leaned over, and then just from the gravity, all this Mountain Dew runs out of my <laughs> mouth and nose. It's like, bleh. and then I let out this like horrible raspy cough. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then I was super mad at Carew. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, what's wrong? I go, you yelled at me, so I sucked in a bunch of Mountain Dew. <laughs> he had no sympathy for me once. I was like, you're a fucking idiot. That's pretty right. stupid. <laughs> so I had a bad time in that hallway. Those are two separate events, but the bad time in that third floor hall- hallway. Oh god! It's like uh, in the abyss, except um, uh, <laughs> with Mountain Dew. I can't watch that scene. <laughs> <laughs> what if you discovered that Mountain Dew worked like that liquid in the abyss, and the fizzy bubbles acted as oxygen that you could breathe? Yeah. You know how they're telling Ed Harris to the visor? Your body will remember. Yeah. Don't panic. Your body remember. Like, Dude, your body's not going to remember. <laughs> Karu's like, just remember, man. <laughs> lean over. Ed Harris, lean over. <laughs> no, don't trust them. You never done that? You never sucked in like too much water or anything? And it's like, no. like beyond? Uh, I've, I've ever had liquid in my lungs like that. I was legitimately drowning. Legitimately, I was going to. What a stupid way to die. <laughs> drowning on the third <laughs> floor. Were you actually drowning? What do you think if you'd have just chilled out and calmed down and taken little breaths, you could have breathed? Like, I'm sure I didn't it feel was, his entire life. I was like going like, <clears throat> like that. Like, first of all, my body was rejecting it because I had fluid in my lungs. <laughs> and then I was trying to, but I was still trying to breathe. And I was fighting like two things. It's like it was, all my instincts were wrong. What basically. if? Yeah, the the Mountain Dew was in his lungs. It's liquid. There was, it didn't fill his lungs, 
but it was fizzing, creating carbon dioxide, which was filling his lungs. Speeding uh, the process of drowning. <laughs> right. So it's like a double-edged drown. The carbonation didn't really play a factor in it. You guys just seemed to, to be focused <laughs> on that. It was the... I mentioned Mountain Dew because it's silly because <laughs> that's what I was drinking. But, uh, yeah, it was more so just... It was my lungs are filled with liquid. <laughs> that was the problem I was having. <laughs> I didn't pause to think about the acidity <laughs> or my sugar intake <laughs> or anything else at the moment. It was more about the sensation of fizzy stuff where it shouldn't be. Like when you do that nose burp and it's all like... Fizzy. It was awful. Yeah. It was awful. Bad times. It was beyond a choke. Let's do the Mountain Dew ad read, and then um, I think we're good. Then we're set. Have you ever choked on food? No. Like, can't breathe choked? Yeah, I choked on a carrot when I was little, and I didn't eat carrots for like a decade. Did they give you the- Blocked the hole, too? Yeah, I was like- (laughs) What were you How'd you get it up? (laughs) Show us on the mic. Yeah, how far did you get it down? (laughs) How far did I get it down? Show show us what you're like. Can we get a super close up on this? Right here. Hey, you gotta pay him. 5400 a month. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that comes with a price tag. No, but uh, I've talked about it before. Uh, I've never choked, but I have apnea. So sometimes I'll stop breathing when I'm asleep. And then I'll wake up. Like in my dream, I'll be unable to breathe. And then I'll wake up realizing I haven't taken a breath in a long time. You realize that? Yeah, I'll wake up like... Uh, I feel like I'm choking Short when I wake breath. up. Right. And then I have to like take in a huge breath. Is that what's going to kill you? No, well, it's not helping. No, mm-hmm. really. Do you, I mean, do you ever think about that? What's going to kill you? It's probably going to be that, <laughs> I've right? Thought about, I've thought about it sometimes. Wow. Yeah. Do you have one of those masks? No, I'm supposed you? to have one. But CPAP. Yeah. I don't. I don't. CPAP. Do you ever wonder if the person who's going to kill Pat. you <laughs> hasn't been born yet? What? And you should be sort of trying to figure out if they're born. Like you should go to the mom and like try if... to prevent her from having sex. Yeah, or like the baby's just well, been born. It's not necessarily a person who's going to going to do it, Gavin. <laughs> if some drunk driver runs me over when I'm 80, you're right. That is one not possible be born scenario. <laughs> yeah, but I'd be annoyed. Or you could just. But would you rather know now? Sleep? Or just live. No, you don't ever want to know. I missed the question. I was laughing at my CPAP joke. What's the question? <laughs> what was your it's, CPAP? It's, you don't want to know. It's a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's not worth it. Um, I the the uh, so you're okay with people smearing poop on uh, bathroom walls on a plane. You're okay with that. You said, Gus. No. Are you? Are, that's, that's exactly are the you, opposite of what I said. Are you okay with? Uh, since it's a normal bodily, bodily function, are you okay with people farting on the plane? Or, more appropriately, less bathroom related, are you okay with people snoring on a plane? I'm okay with people snoring on a plane, but I get very self-conscious when I snore on a plane. So you're, that's, you're, but that's natural, and you, when you're sleeping, you snore. I just don't want to disturb anybody else. That's, well, that's my rush. You're disturbing. disturbing them by taking a big growler in the bathroom that stinks <laughs> But that's up the in the whole bathroom. Fuselage. It stinks, doesn't stink up the whole fuselage. I said it's okay to stink up the bathroom. <laughs> don't don't try to get me on a technicality. The bathroom here. is the size of a broom closet, though. <laughs> I mean, it's like, how do you, what, do you have like some force field like in Star Wars? No, I don't. The, the bathroom does. No. <laughs> <laughs> what about fine? I think on a plane, everybody gets one fart to test the potency of it. What if they all happen at the same time, though? <laughs> Well, then it's going to be hit or miss which ones stink. But you get one stink test, and if it doesn't stink, then, I mean, whatever, you know? Go for it. If it does stink, then you're done. You just hold it in? You hold it in, yeah. There was a a story I saw on Reddit, I think it was yesterday, about this research group that developed a pill you could take, and it had this, these sensors in it, and this pill goes through your intestinal tract, and it tracks your farts via an app on your smartphone. Oh, hell yeah. So you know, like, the composition of the gas you're producing. Like what note it's making as and then, it comes out? The <laughs> composition? Like if it's, if it's going to duration stink and uh, when it's going to happen in the future. Like to try to predict it a bit. So you can set, like, fart timers? Or you get alerts, like you're going to fart in a little while. No way. How do they do that? I don't know. I, I, I read it and I was like, I don't know. I, like, I didn't know whether to take it seriously or not. That's a Black Mirror episode. <laughs> And then they become sentient. <laughs> yeah. What would that be useful for? Uh, I guess like you can check if people have uh, colorectal cancer based on like the gas is being produced. All right. Burned. Diagnostics. <laughs> Get wrecked. Yeah, it's like when uh, when you're blowing smoke out of your car. You're like, that's not normal. Something's wrong there. But the way you said it of you can know if you're about to fart in a while. Shouldn't you just be smart about what you are eating and if that's going to make you fart? I'm like, if you're 32 years old, by now you need to know <clears throat> what makes you well, too. I mean, how short is your fart alarm? For me? Yeah, like, you know you're going to fart, like, at least 30 seconds before, surely. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I've never, ever, like, who, oh! <laughs> I honestly don't believe I've ever in my life unintentionally farted. Have you ever lifted up something <laughs> heavy and fart? <laughs> I have. Uh, maybe I've done that. Maybe. Like in the, but I would have done that in the gym. I don't think so. Well, sleep farts. 
Well, that's yeah. I get a pass. Yeah. I'm, sleeping. I'm doing lots of stuff in my sleep. But I do you push out a sleep fart or does it just fall out of your ass? It just falls out. Because <laughs> it has to have some sort of pressure to make a sound. Well, the butt cheeks are the sound. No, the anus is. Why does everyone think it's the butt cheeks? I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. I don't mean the your whole <laughs> you're cheeks so ups- flapping, you're clapping so together. I get. <laughs> yeah, was like the, the biggest anus proponent I've ever met in my life. He, he likes to talk like, about it a lot. He's like the anus doesn't get enough credit to him, and <laughs> it's he's... an important piece. <laughs> Big puzzle. Well, let me ask you this: Let's say you're in bed, yeah, and you move your legs. Are you moving your legs? Say what? When, when you roll over, when you're oh. yeah. When you roll over, are you the one moving yourself? The answer is the same for if yeah. you let it fart out. Yeah, that's a good point. Same, same answer. Wait, what do you? Because you're in you're a dreamland. You're unconsciously doing it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're doing it, if that, if you're responsible for rolling over in your sleep, then you're also responsible for intentionally farting in your sleep. Hmm. Uh, there was a great video. I don't know if we talked about it before. A guy. It's a great, like, just six second video commentary. A guy had the foresight to document. His first ever farting in front of his girlfriend. Oh, I saw that. And it's just, it's, it was such like a weirdly relatable video. What was that reaction? And she's like, "Oh, we're there now." <laughs> yeah, she said something like, she "Oh, goes, we're doing this." Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like she's, she's like laying on his lap. Dude. <laughs> yeah, and he's like got the phone. It's like this, and then he turns the camera towards her, and then you just hear this loud fart, and she goes, "Wow, <laughs> okay." <laughs> Have you fought in front of Ashley? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. there, there is. Oh, no, here he is. You can see when it happens, your reaction. <laughs> you don't even need to hear it, probably. Wow. <laughs> we're farting in front of each other. Now. So she's not on his lap. She's next to him laying down on the couch. I don't think he goes to, like he he goes to the phone. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's a showman. He's, uh, he, knows how to, he knows how to get the audience ready. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're not going to believe this. You guys, a little caption, turn sound on. He's like, you're going to want to hear this one. <laughs> yeah, but she, she farted in front of me first, so. I'm not ready to fart in front of Meg yet. She can fart unintentionally, too. She's the only person I know who will do that. Uh, my gosh, why kill me for telling the story? We were one time at a, <laughs> we were <laughs> at like a after party for something. And everyone's like super dressed up. It was for an award show. And we saw some friends that we hadn't seen in a while. And we're all just sitting there talking. And Ashley is talking. And she's, like, telling some, like, you know, four or five sentence anecdote. Blah, 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 blah. Farts. And then goes, I just farted. Sorry. <laughs> and then continues telling your story. Like That's badass. Didn't fucking skip a beat. And I was like, how did that happen? <laughs> I, I, we haven't had that moment before or since. But, yeah, she was just like. <laughs> you got to respect calling. you got to kill me. Let's mark yeah. the time on that. So I don't get so a little uh, over an hour in. in. Thank you. I'll, I'll see if I can get that story approved. I'm sure she's fine with that. Why won't you do it, Gavin? Why she went to Vegas it? without me, so fuck her. Yeah. I just don't want to think I'm any more gross than I am. Gavin, <clears throat> do you think she doesn't she think that you fart? She knows to fart. I just go away and do it. You go away every time you have to fart? Yeah, I don't really fart that much. I'm not a huge fart. I don't poop in my hotel room. What? If That's tra- one of if the... I'm, if I'm traveling with somebody else, oh. I go... My secret is I go to the second floor, which is where they have all the conferences. Those are always empty bathrooms. Mm. Lobby's got people in it. You can, go to the, you can go to the conference room level, go there. All the bathrooms are just vacant. LPT. Yeah, yeah but if I'm, I'm uh, bathrooms too tight quarters, too tight. I mean, uh, hotel room too tight quarters, it's too much. Right. Gus, you're probably fine. I'm fine. I don't yeah. care. That's, that's, the bathroom should stink. If the bathroom doesn't stink, something's wrong with it. <laughs> but you gotta keep it. There's no. You gotta keep it in there. It's turn, all one bathroom. You, like, you turn the fan on. There's a huge. There's a huge fan. Does you're your okay wife with- feel the same way? Uh, does she feel the same way? Yeah, I think so. I, mean, I don't want to speak for her, but it's not like she, she's not go, she's not a weirdo. She's not taking the elevator down to the second floor to take a shit. <laughs> I don't think it's weird. I think it's kind. You don't think it's weird? Everyone does it's that? Courteous. So are you happy with her hearing you shit? There you go. Am I happy with her hearing me shit? Like, say you're in one of those hotel rooms where the bathroom's not a bathroom. It's like a glass wall with a little, yeah. like, like yeah, that's fine. saloon door. <laughs> then it's an door. art piece. I got no problem. Yeah. I got no problem with that. What if it's in fact, like in the... fact, we've stayed at a hotel like that before, and it's been fine. What if it's like the, the sort of crackly sound of like a big log coming out? <laughs> okay, crackly. How did that podcast get here? Right here? So. How did this podcast get? Do here? you ever have like the bit where it's it's kind of like someone scrunching paper? <laughs> <laughs> so like you've swallowed a bunch of Mountain Dew and there's still little fizzies <laughs> in it. I, I, are you are you okay? Do you what, see a what does it sound like when you do a really big? It doesn't. I've log. never thought to describe it as paper crackling. Well, I, well that's I, why he doesn't fart in front of his <laughs> but It's like you're killing me. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? Like a big mm. poo coming out sound. It's it's not farting. It's just like 
Uh, oh, like it's there's little pressure holes on the side of the dirt. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> sure. I'm super it's excited. Like crackling. How, how would you describe that? I, I don't know. You, I think you like the way you said it. It's like little, uh, tiny little bubble, <laughs> little, little poppy. I'm blushing. <laughs> I just wouldn't know how to explain that sound. And it's only that. It doesn't occur anywhere else. It's only big poos coming out. I'm super excited about Infinity War. <laughs> oh, Infinity War. Oh, wow. Nice segue. Can't change the subject in any way whatsoever. Is anybody excited about the uh, <clears throat> the solo movie? No. That comes out soon, right? It comes out in May. May Four 25th, months. I think. No. No, I'm not. Maybe I'll get excited when I see some of the, the promotions. There's materials. been nothing, yeah. Yeah. I feel like people keep calling that out, like they're concerned that there's been no marketing for it, but I feel like... Yeah, with, so. yeah, with Last Jedi, like they kind of want to maybe focus on that, and mm -hmm. then you know maybe now we're at a point where we'll start seeing. They also don't have to stuff. market it at all because that's a really good gonna point. see it. Mm. That's, that's what they really do with point. Marvel now. They market like maybe the month before. There's a trailer at least, but it feels like there's very like Thor. I remember <laughs> it just showed up in theaters one day, and I was like, oh, that's out already. I read earlier today that Fandango said that Black Panther has had the most advanced ticket sales of any Marvel movie so far. Wow. Like, it beat the record. The previous record was uh, um, Captain America Civil War. And Do you that, think it'll be the most successful like non-Avengers movie? What, what is, I mean, what is currently the most successful non -Avengers? Technically, Civil War's not an Avengers movie. It's you know a Marvel movie. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Wonder Woman was the most successful uh, solo. No, uh, so it wasn't even Marvel. Superhero movie. <clears throat> what? And then I know at least for GC it was, yeah. and then definitely this year. So, but it goes to show. I think it falls along the same lines. Is uh, what you have more representation in superheroes. It's like people get really excited about that. They want to go see those things. And Wonder Woman crushed it because I mean there hadn't been you know I mean there's been female superhero movies before, but not not the gold standard like Wonder Woman. You know, and it was an awesome movie to boot. So I'm not surprised at all to hear that that Black Panther's going to kill it. Yeah, the trailers for that have been great. It seems like a it was. The 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 premise seems like really out there, right? It's like a country that's hidden and you can't see it and it looks like something different from the outside and it's something different on the inside, but it it looks great. It's a source material. Yeah. You know, the this um African nation of Wakanda. Isn't that what it mm -hmm. is? Right? Yeah. And uh yeah, it it's always this place in the Marvel universe where it's evolved over time, but you know I, they go and it's, it's weird that they I have thought... fictional places and real places in the same universe. Yeah. But they have Wakanda and Sokovia or whatever, and also New York. Mm -hmm. It's like if Star Wars just popped into New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's go to Fat Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, set set the hyperdrive. But I saw someone. I forget who it was. I saw someone online was was tweeting <clears throat> something about uh, Infinity War. They said like, "Oh, I hope we see some like real consequences and a death that matters." I'm tired of this comic booky shit. Like these are. Comic, comic book books, movies. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do you, I don't know if you if you're saying this ironically or not. But also, they die in comic books all the time. Yeah, all the doesn't time. It doesn't sense. matter. Superman died in a recent DC movie, and everyone was like, "All right, you know." I mean, again, it's a death with no consequence. But you know, it's, yeah, comic book deaths are. What was the story with that? Because I never saw the next movie. He wasn't dead. He wasn't dead. Just was he? Think. Okay, yeah. let me think about that. So <laughs> What's yes, that? he was. Did he die again? They took him in Justice League. And this movie's now like two months old, so if you haven't seen it, sorry if I'm gonna spoil something for you. Uh, they take him to the Kryptonian, uh, like regeneration chamber where they also made Doomsday in uh, Batman vs Superman. Batman vs Superman. So it's this device that they just kind of keep going back to, and it was something about God. I can't remember because <clears throat> the movie was so muddled. But uh, Flash had to do something super precise. To charge the thing at the right moment to bring Superman back. But so, when Lex Luthor used it, it turned Zod into Doomsday? Doomsday, right. So, Why wow, you gosh, we sound like your phone, huh? <laughs> Siri wants to chime in. It How embarrassing I, for you. He thinks I asked what God is. Just a little moment. <laughs> <laughs> he said Zod. So okay. said, oh, okay. It's funny, <laughs> Zod. <laughs> oh, God. Is that a line from Ever Superman 2? When the uh, president has to kneel oh, before yeah, Zod yeah. and he goes, oh, God, and he goes, Sad. <laughs> such a such a great understated line. So at the end of Batman versus Superman, when the got stabbed by a Kryptonian spear, he Kryptonite, dead, right? Yeah. And then and then, but then the Earth kind of lifts up. Oh. Yeah, they, they they diffused it even in the moment that oh he's not really dead, but he was he was dead. So why was the Earth moving? I don't know. Yeah, he was dead. It was a metaphorical 
earth moving. That's what it was. Oh, it was just it's like, it's it's like a, don't worry about it, kids. Yeah. Something will happen. Later. We'll figure it out later. But that that to me is where and I liked Justice League. I thought it was unfairly like bashed. The one that I'm, I can't believe I'm bringing this up again because I caught shit about it for like two weeks straight after I said it. The problem with Justice League is it, it Justice League, the movie represented Superman as being overpowered. He's you don't need anyone else mm-hmm. in that movie. You just need Superman. And it's, it's there's nothing in that movie <clears throat> that happens from the moment that Superman is revived. There's nothing in the movie that happens that doesn't involve Superman saving the day. I mean, everything is. That's the whole movie then, right? He, like, show, like... he shows up every character. Literally every character. He shows up. Except for Wonder Woman. He doesn't show up Wonder Woman. But he – like Flash, it's ridiculous how much he shows up Flash. And they make a point of it in the movie. Like there's all this stuff. Eh. And people got mad at me because they were they – were, you know, Flash apologist? They were explaining to me uh, that Superman is not overpowered. And here's why he's not overpowered in the comics and all that stuff. That's fine. I don't read Superman comics. What do you right. think would happen to the industry if they, at, right before home video release, they took the IMDb score of a movie, like doubled it, whatever, and that's the cost of the movie to buy? That's interesting. Would that, would that, would you think that would make people, people just try to vote down make every Star movies? Wars movie? Yeah. I wouldn't trust that. But I'm annoyed that, like, if I want to watch Justice League, I'm annoyed that I have to pay as much <laughs> as, like, a really nah. good movie. It's a, it's a, Listen, it's a good movie. It's a huge spectacle. You can get kind of lost in the fact there's like little things here and there that you don't like, but it's still really enjoyable. Like I said, I'm, I'm, you know, the Star Wars movies, I show up because I want to f- see fucking Star Wars. There's some really incredible moments in every one of those movies. Like I talked about my favorite moment probably in any Star Wars movie uh, in terms of like space battles and stuff was in The Last Jedi, even though I didn't, wasn't crazy about The Last Jedi. I love that move when like Poe grabs his windshield and does something like kind of like oh, yeah. skid and gets behind the TIE fighters. So the fuck, handbrake turn is fucking uh, yeah. badass. Cool. Yeah. And I don't care about the physics of it. I don't care about the physics of bombs in Star Wars, bombs <laughs> in space. I don't give a shit. It's a bomber. I want to see that. That's fun, you know. But I just, you know, when they get to stuff like – Luke suckling at the tits of some <laughs> space walrus. <laughs> um, it was fine. You didn't like that? What's the point of that? What is who, who storyboards like, that? Weird, like additional universe stuff yeah, in those movies. Not it's like that. I mean, the look to camera. Well, not look to camera, but the look <laughs> basically. To yeah, camera. with like well, the, the, what's, was, what's the, the was, point of Yoda like going through R two D two and getting like the little piece of beef jerky and eating that? I mean, it's the same shit. Well, like Job of the Hutt eats the frog or whatever right. in a bowl. It's world building. No, I thought it was cool. It's fine. Squeezing, it's fine. Squeezing the boob into the jug and then drinking it. I thought it was weird. They was you gotta squeeze a boob to get the milk creature. out of it. Well, it looked like the creature was very inflamed. Like yeah. she had been building up a lot of milk, right? And so well, cause he, probably, cause he, you probably could have just been like done a circle around it in the air and it would have shot. The facial <laughs> reaction of the creature too was too much. <laughs> like Why? it had like a knowing like this is what we do every day. <laughs> get stuck in. It's Go a on. symbiotic in, relationship. Yeah. He pays me $5,400 a month. <laughs> cool Sugar milk. This. I'm cool with this. I'm just doing this till I'm done with school. <laughs> and then I'm going to I'm gonna be a doctor. Was that scene in there and like the big fish scene, is that just so people weren't wondering how he survived? Uh, who knows? Like how he wasn't starving to death. And I think it was fun then- world building. I think it was just like little winks and fun things, like in Empire I, on a Yoda's planet. Like with the, the fish thing in particular, like when he's walking out there, like along, I think it was actually maybe before the milk, when he's walking out there and there's that one scene where he needs to get across a big gap and he uses like that big <laughs> stick to get over. I think that's foreshadowing the fact that he's cut himself off from the force because I watched that and in the moment I thought, why doesn't he just force jump across that? Yeah. yeah. It's like to start giving you and setting yeah. all that up. So I think it's a lot of little things like or that. Like force choke a fish. Or, or right. force, force milk. milk. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. He was using his actual Gross. fingers. <laughs> and a lot of that too, it's like you kind of give it a pass too. Like that pole that he uses to stab that fish is about how long is that pole? Like 100 feet? It's really long. Yeah. It's really long, 150 it feet long. Snap, or the wind could just yeah. take you Yeah, there's also not even one dang tree on that island. Yeah, no kidding. Where'd Where'd you get the pole? Ass pole? How badass Amazon. would it be, though, if you just force milked all four tits <laughs> at the same time? And the thing was just walking about. didn't know what was going on. Well, to me, it's he stabs the fish, and we see him do that. Then he's walking with it. How do you get the fish? How do you physically get to, like, pull, you the, stick pull up? the pole up? Yeah. yeah. Or maybe he forced up the fish. You have a fish with a stick? You get, that pole's 150 feet long. <laughs> By the time it gets like 75 feet, it's gonna be like, how do you control that shit? Yeah, I guess the weight of the force. fish. The weight of the fish. <laughs> it's like keeping it all stable. That whole that whole fish thing is suspect to me. Totally suspect. Well, you know what's not suspect? What's not suspect? Casper mattresses. 
I want to remind everyone, this episode of the Risky Podcast is brought to you by Casper. Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. Casper's mattresses are designed by humans for humans. The original Casper mattress combines multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right bounce. Its breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulate your body temperature through the night. And they're not just a mattress company. Casper offers a wide array of products to ensure an overall better sleep experience. I uh, know they've got uh, pillows and sheets as well, everything you need for sleep. Uh, you can buy it easily online, completely risk-free. It'll be delivered right to your door in a compact box. Casper understands the importance of truly trying out a mattress and all reality you spend a third of your life on. Casper offers free delivery and painless returns within a 100-day period, so you don't have to lie down in a showroom. Casper is available in the U.S., Canada, and now the U.K. Get fifty dollars towards select mattresses by get fifty dollars towards select mattress purchase by visiting casper.com/rt and using promo code RT at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. That's fifty dollars towards any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com/rt using promo code RT at checkout. Thank you, Casper, for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. So that ad mentioned the U.K. and uh, what was the the thing, Patrick, that we were we got an iTunes award for being like most downloaded in Australia. Top and what? Top 10. Top 10 for like Australia and Canada? Yeah. Australia and Canada. So America, you need to step it up. Where you at? UK also. What's that got to do with the UK? Because it's another country when we think about it. I thought it was the UK, but it was Canada. Oh. It's Australia and Canada. So UK, UK needs to get up there. And the US. We're popular in Australia for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe because we go there a lot. Uh, we got RTX Sydney coming up. What is that? Just a couple of weeks from now. From when the time this comes out, it'll be like two and a half weeks away. Damn. You ready to go back down? Oh, wait. You don't know if you're going. Go. I don't know. I can't Sorry. Go. It's a sore subject for Gavin. <laughs> Have you heard any of these stories about these people in Oregon now that can pump their own gas? Yeah. Didn't we talk about it last week? Did, they did, can did or we? they have I to. I guess, I guess service stations can still offer an attendant who can pump gas, right? Right. But how was the last time you saw a full service attendant here in town? Well, I mean, they had them last week in Oregon. If they had, a ga- I'm assuming they did, a bunch of people didn't install gas pumps after the law passed. Well, the gas pumps were there. Now just people can touch them. Right, but each they one of them last week had an Oregon? attendant. What I'm saying is, it's not illegal to have an attendant. They right. can still provide an attendant right. if they want. But yeah, no, before, but the thing yeah, is now, now or- Oregonians are faced with a world in which they may have to pump their own gas, and they're mortified. Oh, you talked. <laughs> Some about, of them are mortified. You talked about on off topic. Uh, you get in your podcast. Yeah, I feel like pump your own gas sounds like it's actually you know you're there like mm, you're really just. <laughs> it's, but have you seen all the, the the photos of people doing it incorrectly? It's it's crazy. It's fucking. Crazy. What are they doing wrong? Like holding the nozzle upside down, or holding the nozzle <laughs> like a foot away and like pouring it into the hole instead of inserting <laughs> the whole thing in. Most of it goes in. <laughs> oh my God. It's like did, they, did you not pay attention? Do you what a, was going on? No, also, do you like watch Gavin in the car with TV? The what, what's that? Have you oh, not right, ever right, seen yeah. a movie where somebody puts gas in their car? Yeah, because right, that's yeah. how they do it. I don't drive, and I know how to put gas. You in don't car. drive? No. Do you just take lifts everywhere? Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's not that funny. Why is it funny? Is it true? Yeah, it's true. He doesn't have a driver's drive? license. Do you want me to teach you on the on the tarmac right now? Do some handbrake tests. I've offered <laughs> yeah. to teach him. To drive a car so many times. We have a long running bet that I'll uh I'll I'll have a pilot's license before he has a driver's <laughs> license. So and his whole thing is I don't know what your thing is anymore. You're too old at this point. You need a driver's license, you need a car, you're an adult. In, some people don't drive. They just don't. Some people don't drive in places where you don't drive. Yeah. Like New York City, San Francisco, where I'm it's, helping the economy. This is this is Texas. You're supposed to get an enormous pickup and park in parking spaces that are too small for a fucking Toyota. What is with this state? We have the highest per capita for pickups in the world, probably, right? Every time I go to a fucking parking lot, spaces are this narrow. What is that? They're trying to cram more spaces in. But it's like they get one space out of like a whole row. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's terrible. That being said, there's no fucking parking in this building and I've had it. I don't, I'm going to quit. I just... I can't, if I go to lunch, like I can't, I was over at the animation department. I came over here. It's two thirty when I got over here, three o'clock, and there's literally just no space, no, nothing. I'm parked all the way like over by stage one. In a space. Know. Here's the solution. <laughs> yes. Here's the solution. <laughs> we need a tram like at a fucking amusement park. You started what? the company. 
get a reserved space. Yeah, oh, there's gonna be a vlog I was gonna do about getting a reserved space. Did you, I say all you gotta do is spray paint your name on a space. It's <laughs> yeah. good to go. No, they tell me to move my car all the fucking time. Who? Well, because you're parking sound check. I have to do. I try parking. Park in the other company's spaces. Park in our spaces like, and reserve one of them. Well, those spaces are not like they never use them. <laughs> and it's not like uh, your car blends in. I know. I know. Well, the, uh, the, the, did you ever tell you the vlog that I was going to do when I wanted my own parking space? No. <laughs> You'll appreciate this. I just, all these vlog ideas I never got around to doing. Uh, I wanted my own parking space, but I thought it would be too big of a douchebag move to, like, say, okay, guys, I'm getting my own parking space, and that's just it. So instead of what I was going to, what I was going to do was I was going to get signs printed up, and I was going to put them up on posts, and I was going to give reserved <laughs> parking spaces to Matt and Jeff and Gus, and then... People would come to me and say, "Why didn't you get a reserve parking space?" Uh, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> and then you guys are the dickheads. And then I'm like, "Yeah, I, I mean, do you think I should ask for a reserve space?" And they'd be, like, "Yeah, you should ask reserve who? <laughs> like, just do it." Like, you I thought you say you were gonna put up one with a fake name, and then just be like, "Nobody has yeah, that name." Can't you can't park, park there. there. <laughs> I'm like, they're like, "Why'd you park in Bill Franklin's space?" <laughs> like, because he's a dick, <laughs> and I don't want him to have his own space. Hire someone. Who all they do is give you their name to park in. Yeah, but still my car. <laughs> it's not like people know are going to come to work and go. They're going to see the space reserved. Yeah, just space say like Clive said, I could park here every day. <laughs> Why is Clive your go-to name? Come up with a name, Gavin, <laughs> Kirk. <laughs> hey, there was though. I I did have a, a, a de- that was that, that would have been a devious thing to do that with the parking spaces, and I. Did. I like to think that I think deviously, but I don't act deviously. Like, my mind is smart enough to think of the evil thing to do, but then sometimes I'm like, I'm going to be a better person than I do that. Uh, and today when I pulled in, I was, like, going up and down the rows, and I was, like, vr, 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 complaining. And then I see, go, one of the cars I go by, I go by your car, mm-hmm. was in there, and I go by Ellie's car. And I thought, I'm going to call Ellie and have her come move her car. <laughs> <laughs> else, just to see if she would do it. Just to see if I could give her a ring go, hey, I need you to uh, move your car over But you wouldn't do that because that's too direct. You'd be like, hey, could you go get me some Funyuns? <laughs> and then you would just be waiting around the corner and you'd nick her space. The problem is she'd say, I have a whole box of Funyuns under my desk for you. <laughs> I need a really so big bag. She'd be prepared and I have to like come up with a really like more and more ridiculous stuff You for can't her come up with a single reason to get her to leave? No, I could, yeah. But my thought was, I wonder if I could call, like, I'm wonder. it's more like, if I said to do it, would she say yes? That was the question <laughs> also, in my head. That would end up just taking longer than parking further away and walking. I'm just saying, I didn't do it. Yeah. I'm just saying that the thought crossed my I, mind. I hate when people, like, I'm in a car with someone and they're, like, circling a parking lot. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm waiting to get a really close space. Like, just park. Just find any space and put your car in it. Like, we're going to waste way more time yeah. circling than if you just put your car in a space and we just walk. Park yeah. 200 feet away is still quicker. Especially if right. you're going to somewhere like a shopping mall where you're going to walk like 12 miles when you're in there anyway. And they're like, well, I got it closer to the door. It's 300 feet closer. It's like you're in a, you're in a grocery store. You're going to walk up and down every <laughs> single aisle 15 times yeah. Unless looking you're for something. A couch out of there. It doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's like uh, I just uh, was talking to the guy that I go to a smaller gym and right, uh, right. What? Brag about it. Yeah, I go to we a, can see the I results. Go to a, I go to a tiny gym. <laughs> with little tiny I look waist. giant in that gym. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking huge. <laughs> like crouching to get in the door. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I, I, I use the biggest dumbbells. They're 14 pounds, but I use, <laughs> they're the biggest ones they have. But they have a little gym. It's like privately owned. Um, and they've been to three different locations over the history of their thing and thought, how fucking terrible would it be to move a gym? Oh, God. That would literally be the worst Weekend, it would take. Do they just, think of all the stuff they have in there? But yeah, it would take me like at least a week or a weekend. Do, do, you, think, do, do you think they sell it as a course? <laughs> they oh yeah. yeah, it's like one of them boot camps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can pay move to move gym. the gym. Carry carry this treadmill people a mile are, down the road. People yeah. are like lunging down the road, <laughs> doing lunges. Yeah, no, they uh, the, and he he said that the first time they moved, they moved. Across the hall from where they were. Oh, like, God. oh my God! So annoying. If you've got or next door or something like that, it was like, no, 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 that's easy. You just line up all the treadmills and then you stand <laughs> oh, on the first great. one and you ride that shit all <laughs> you the way to the other place. Throw the weights on them. They go pew 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 <laughs> in the other place. So yeah, I just thought, man, that of all, I would just sell the business and start a new one. You know, that's it. It seems like moving a gym would be ugh impossible. You would rather have people come in and move all of the gym equipment out, but not put it back in the new place. And then you would rather have different people bring equipment to a new place than just hire movers 
to move it from one place to another is what you're saying. Movers would destroy you. Can you imagine? Movers are already terrible. You're, have you have you ever used professional movers? Yeah, they suck. They're awful. I mean, listen, I'm sure it's me like six hundred bucks. They break stuff. They, it's it's weird. They also don't want to break stuff, so they don't move everything. It's probably just my extraordinary bad luck that a hundred percent of the times that I've used a moving company, they've been terrible. Uh, but the big thing that I've noticed among this small selection of terrible moving companies, apparently that I've had in my life, is that they all negotiate after the fact. And the worst thing is they do is they negotiate after they have your stuff. And it's always it's always something like, come out and bid on this, and then they bid on it, and they said, oh, well, we didn't know there was a staircase. It's like, you came here and bid on the stuff. You walked up the stairs to get here. It's like, yeah, but it's not in our form that there was a staircase. There's no box check for the staircase, so... That's like going to be another three hundred bucks or something like that. There's situations where if you don't, if you still don't pay, they'll just dump your shit yeah. on the front yard of the. Old if you're lucky, house, and they just auction it off or something <laughs> like that. Also, I've had friends like through the course of my career, I have not left Austin, but I have helped people relocate to Austin from other places, and I somehow get wrapped up in their move and their relocation, and almost every single one of them. If they live in their house after they come to Austin for like six to eight weeks with nothing because the moving company's like, yeah, we just don't have any like trucks going your direction right now. But as soon as we do, we'll we'll put your stuff on a truck and send it down there. Yeah. Never used a mover ever? Not – no, I've moved in a U-Haul. I, I would love to hear if uh, – same, same with me. Like I have a pickup truck and I would just <clears> throw all my stuff in the pickup and yeah. make run after run after run. And I have used movers probably – we used movers to come from Ralph Oblinato to here. Mm-hmm. They were actually probably the best because we had a good system of like labeling. I'm sure movers are pissed off too because they probably show up to like 50% of their jobs or more. And people don't realize that movers just move stuff. They don't pack anything. Right. Packing is – They don't wrap the couches and stuff? Uh, the big stuff like couches they might handle. But like there will be people who just – you know, people are bad at packing. They don't realize how long it takes to pack up everything you own. So I'm sure they're like packing stuff while the movers are moving. My it. last moving experience was so bad. I, I was I had this projector screen. It was like a hundred inch screen. I used to watch movies on, and they and they looked at that. We're not moving that. And I, and I was like, because well, it might break. It's like, yeah, it'll break, and then we'll be responsible for yeah. it. I was like, I don't care if it breaks. I'm like, we're not moving it. I was like, but it's I can't. It won't fit in any car, and it took me like four hours to put together. And and they were like, yeah, we're not taking it. <laughs> so right. it's, it's still there. I, I just moved, I left it on the wall. And one of the guys who was moving the big things, like the couch and stuff, he sweat all over it. Leather couch, just drenched <laughs> in this dude's bald head sweat. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to sell that. I've, I've, <laughs> I've had really, that happen before. Just clean it. It's a leather couch. But he should clean it. I guess so, sure. I mean, no, I get it. I but didn't pay for it to be moved and wet. You are, just you are correct. You did not to pay for it to be owned by You yeah. also paid for it to be moved and dry. That wasn't I mean, part I get of the deal. It that it's in Austin and it's hot. But also, yeah, wear a hat or... Yeah, just put a sheet on it. I don't Something. swear. It was like coming off his eyebrows. Like <laughs> You could see him dripping It's on like it. he had his face on it. And then, you, he and then he would rest. Yeah. And he would just like put his and cheek he was just on like, it. Job done. That's a wet couch. <laughs> Do you know the one thing the movers damaged in the, in the move from Ralph Oblinato to here that I was very upset about? What's that? And it's such a simple thing and I don't know why it upset me. Because it felt at the time like a super frivolous purchase to me when we bought it. And then when they damaged it, I got mad. I got mad. They damaged that whiteboard. That we have that's on the rollers. Oh, it's the right. metal whiteboard yeah, that's yeah. also magnetic and mm-hmm. you can type stuff. And it was just like, I felt like we need a whiteboard to like talk about ideas <clears> and stuff. And it felt super frivolous to buy it and everything. And then took really good care of this whiteboard. And then they, <laughs> they, they upset about. dented and scratched it right in the middle of it. And they just were like, it was, it was like that when we got it. And I was like, it was, no. I guarantee I'm not just making up shit to get you to buy me a new whiteboard. Is there? Can you take pictures of your stuff and then hold them accountable? Yeah, I guess you could. I but guess you could. Who would take photo of the whiteboard? <laughs> this is also we moved like honestly, four, five, four years, five years ago. How long ago was it? Almost four years. So before, and I wasn't like now. I take pictures of everything. I feel like like because I have my camera phone with me. But you forget how recent a development that is. We had oh, camera yeah. phones four years ago. I know we did, but it's just like it wasn't. <laughs> I feel like I wasn't taking photos of everything. Like I didn't have as much storage. But that's the you thing. No, you were you were ahead of the curve on taking videos and and 
photos. You definitely were. But I had like separate items that recorded stuff. Like I had a video camera, even yeah. in, even on the Congress. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you avenue. still do. Well, I have my Travel with DSLR. A camera everywhere. I do. My camera, with camera <laughs> Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. <laughs> That's going to change as of next week. My last vlog is coming up. So you're going to be gobless Kirk when you travel? Kirk said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be gobless. I'll be back to uh, standard gubs. Standard gubs. Just the regular amount of gubs. You'll be fun to travel with again. Gosh. I, 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 and I'm done traveling, I think. I've got, I mean, I have going to RTX Sydney, but I don't have anything booked at all anywhere. I'm, uh, this is something only you, you guys will relate to, but I'm losing system wide upgrades that are expiring. You're losing them? Just use them. Well, I got to use them before yeah, January days. 31st. Yeah. What am I just gonna fly somewhere just so I can get the upgrade? Well, you just flew internationally to London, didn't you use them then? Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't. You didn't use them. I didn't use them. Yeah. Oh, because you were on British. Airways. That's right. Because yeah, I was on British Airways. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You nailed it. Oh. I didn't want to bring it up. Old wounds. <laughs> Old wounds. You did it to yourself. I do like this. It was, it was revealed on the last podcast that you and uh, Ellie have mended fences. Yeah. But you did it by making fun of me, which seems to be her new MO. Like, what do you she mean has, making fun of you? You guys were doing like the, what you guys bond over? Something you were making fun of me about. Because you thought like Pat Butcher. That was it. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. And uh, then uh, she did the same thing with Barbara. She was like, she went out and made buds with Barbara by like making fun of me. So, so I'm on the outs with Ellie. Ellie was making it sound like I was the problem and like I had Cut all these out. issues with all these people. But I think Ellie just hated everyone. I think. <laughs> and now she doesn't as much. <laughs> she was persecuted. I think she was just figuring out like where. She fits in everything, you know. Yeah, but you new gotta, kid on the block. You gotta start like neutral, and then you may ha- hate people. It also you don't just start like everyone sucks, and no, they gotta prove it. To you, me. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you do. When you're my assistant, yes. Oh, okay. I sat her down. I go, look, that's fair. Everyone's gonna come at you. Just don't listen to anybody. Don't listen. So it's your fault. that yes. you hated everyone. I was like, listen, you so that's why she's throwing him under the bus. Practice this phrase. Mr. Burns is not available. Just say that. That's <laughs> Mr. All <you> need to <laughs> Burns, <laughs> say not available. Excellent. <laughs> all right. Well, it's time to wrap this up. So I want to thank everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys again next week when we we will be back live. And uh, bye. (laughs) Bye, everybody.